Hey, Undisputed listeners. It's Ben Verlander, host of Fox Sports' new baseball podcast, Flippin' Bats. Before today's episode, I wanted to share a sneak peek of the latest episode of Flippin' Bats, recorded live from Coors Field in Denver for the MLB All-Star Week. This clip showcases my journey to meet the first two-way All-Star in the history of the game, Angels pitcher and hitter Shohei Otani. What's up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Flippin' Bats with your host, Ben Verlander. We are live here from Coors Field in Denver. The Home Run Derby just finished up. We have an incredible episode for you guys. Today was media day here in Denver. We talked to a bunch of players, got a bunch of great content there. Also, I am going to walk you guys through the quest to meet Shohei Otani and how it all went down. All right, it is Sunday. We have entered Coors Field for the first time today as the Futures game. Um, I know Otani's not here yet. We're just getting the lay of the land. Just figuring out figuring out our plan of attack. We are here. And we are live in Coors Field. Let's go. Hi guys, we're out here on the field. Futures Day. American League team is stretching behind me. Uh, Tani has not yet showed up, but he will. he's out there somewhere. So I'm on this quest, this quest to meet Shohei Otani. Yeah. Give me one tip or pointer. Like, what's something he's interested in that can get me in there? In on his good side. Clash of Clans. If you know anything about, Cla- pick his brain on Clash of Clans. There you go. I'm looking for Otani. It is time. It's going to happen. I think that's where we get him. I think we get him right there. I just met Otani. My heart is pounding. I've met a million people in my life. None as cool as that. He's Babe Ruth. He's better than Babe Ruth. I can go home. To hear more, subscribe to Flippin' Bats on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. New episodes come out every Tuesday featuring candid one-on-one interviews with players from your favorite MLB teams, as well as talk about the current state of baseball. Now, back to Undisputed. Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning, guys. Good morning, good morning. You know what? How are we doing? If Lagan were playing for Team USA there like he go. should be instead out there promoting no, that. No, 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 what is no, that, no, that no, space no, jam no, ripoff no. that he's doing? Maybe this wouldn't be happening to Team USA. You got USA. the best player in uh, the play- on the that's planet. That's true, and that's all they need. Where's Kabai anyway? Yeah. Oh, my bad, my uh, bad. Yeah, uh, okay. He's getting surgery. Is what he's this is interesting, this whole situation, and, and we need to address it. Before mm-hmm. winning a gold medal, Team USA, they need to show if they can win a game first. The Kevin Durant, like Shannon mentioned, led American squad, suffered their second straight setback yesterday as they lost to Australia 91-83. to Patty Mills led the way for the Aussies at 22 points. And the Americans had their chances late, but a late air ball and turnover ultimately did them in. The only good news is it's only a pre-Olympics exhibition here, so this isn't the real deal yet. Shannon, scale of 1 to 10, how concerned should we be right now about Team USA? Skip, I'm, on a, I'm at an 8. I'm mm-hmm. concerned because, but I don't think the team is constructed very well. Uh, when you look at the team, they're a very, very small team. You go, Really, your only true two bigs, I mean, if you consider those guys bigs, is Draymond and Bam. They're also your only two primary defenders, but they're rim, they're like not perimeter defenders. Uh, if you look at the way it, the Olympic, the dream teams have been, and I, you know, this is not a dream team, but if you look at the way they've been constructed, you look at Scotty and Mike, you had two seven footers in Patrick Union and David Robinson. You've always had a Dwight Howard. You've had a Tyson Chandler. You had a Shaq. You had an Elijah one, but they don't have that. They said, you know what we're going to do? The way the game is going now, the way the game is shifted, Skip, we're going to score. We're going to outscore you. We're going to outshoot you. Well, hell, in two games, Nigeria and Australia have outshot you. And guess what else is happening, Skip, because they're small? They're getting killed on the glass. They lost, they lost, they lost uh, Nigeria by 12. They lost last night by 7 to uh, Australia. 
This is not shaping up to be well. At some point in time, somebody's got to say, you know what? We're going to take a backseat. Skip, it's not a glamorous. And you don't get credit. You don't get bonus points for leading the Olympic team in scoring. People, you might not know this, but Charles Barkley led the original dream team in scoring. But he wasn't as big as Mike. He wasn't as big as Mike, uh, uh, as uh, Magic and Larry. Mm. So you got to be willing to take a backseat, Skip. I remember, I think it was 2012. Kobe mm. went to the team, went to Coach K and says, look, I'm here to defend Put together a tape of the opposing team's best offensive guys. I got them. Now, you know Kobe could play D. D. Wade was willing to play D. Uh, uh, LeBron, if he needed to, could lock up. Mm -hmm. But right now, Skip, everybody's like, I need... And they need a point guard. They need a true point, a guy that can get them in and out of set, get them easy shots. Mm -hmm. Right now, they don't have that. Now, Skip, I'm not in one of these camps that believe because we have all NBA players that we supposed to be dominating, we supposed to blow these teams out like they did in the original, like they did early on. Because the, the world is starting to catch up. The world has some of the best players also, Skip. Yeah, I believe we have overall the most of, of the best players in the NBA. But you see Jokic, you see Doncic, you mm -hmm. see some of these guys, Sabonis, Skip uh, Giannis. They have guys that can play at a very high level. They're superstars. Mm -hmm. So I'm not in this camp. We should be beating these teams by 50 points. No, we shouldn't. Mm. But I do believe we should be winning these games. And I understand that a lot of these teams have played together a lot longer than we have. They're just as ragtag for us. This is basically an all-star game, Skip. Mm. They came together, what, five, six days ago? Mm -hmm. And they're trying to go out there and compete. But because the team is not constructed, I believe, in the right way with no defenders, all scores. Uh, no true point guard, no re no bigs to protect the rim and rebounding. I think mm. that's what we're seeing, and it's showing its head. Mm. But guess what? There's some other teams that got bigger play, got the Serbs are a little bit bigger than than uh, the Nigerian team. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe the Nigerians they shot what 23s, Skip. I don't know if uh, uh, they're gonna be able to shoot like that consistently. Yeah, but. The Americans are going to have to defend that three-point line, Skip. Mm. They're going to have to do a better job defending the perimeter. Jason Tatum and KD got backdoored how many times? They, Pat, Patty Mills taking you. Patty Mills is taking people off the dribble. Mm. That'll get mm. you beat. Mm. That'll get you beat. So you're all the way up to an eight. I'm an eight. I'm an eight with level of concern. The fire alarm is going off. Yeah. Right? Well, well you know, like, uh, you know, that's just, you know, it's just one game. Skip, you got to think about it. They lost mm. two games in t over 10,000 days. They lost two games in 48 hours. Mm. Okay. So my scale one to 10 of concern right now for this team is at a two. Okay. And it probably should be at like a, a .5. Okay. But I will give you this. The world is catching up to us, and every time we have another international games, it just gets a little closer and yes. a little closer and a little closer. Yeah. And last night we were playing an Australian team that had five in, what is it, six? I think one, two, Patty three, Mills, four, Bible, five, six. Engel, it's six NBA Double players. Double. And all these kids, who are now men, they, they grew up together. Yes. So they've been playing internationally together for a long, for, for At going least a back decade. To, about a decade. And Patty Mills is getting up there in years, and, and Aaron Baines is getting up there, and Della Devo, excuse Double me, Double. Della Vadova is up there, Ingles, but they're, they're aging players, but they're, they're brothers, yeah. and, and you you got to respect the fact that, they, that they can just other. walk on the floor and click. Yes, and there's going to be chemistry among the Aussies. Basically, like Tom Brady and Gronk. That is because true. they played together so long. That they went true. right to tab and picked right up where they left off. And just for the record, back in 2019, we played them in an exhibition ahead of world competition, and we lost to them by four in an exhibition. So that was one of those 54 and two. Correct. We lost that, and then back in 2004, to your point, we did lose to Italy badly, 95 to 78, on the way to the Olympics that we. Just bronze. we bombed laid an it. Egg. Yeah, we laid the biggest all-time egg yes. ever, and we got the bronze. So we finished third, and we lost three games in that Olympics. And that was a team featuring AI. Starberry was on that team. D Wade, Mello, LeBron was a very young player, but and he didn't play that much. Stoudemire, Tim Duncan was on that team. Lamar Odom was on that team. So. It had its star power, and it finished third. Right. And it got its butt kicked three different times mm -hmm. in that Olympics and then lost the semifinal to the eventual champion, Manu's Argentina. Argentina. Okay. So now back to your point about size. Let's start with size. So they did. They, they, they actively and publicly said, 
we're going to build a shooting team yeah. as opposed to, you know, at, at the sacrifice of pure height. Right. So I don't know what's another American center that they had a shot at. There's a guy playing the, in the finals right now named DeAndre Ayton. Ayton. <clears throat> Bahamas. He's Bahamas, so that that doesn't work. I don't, I don't think he qualifies. I'm I'm not I, sure about it, but I don't think he qualifies. So then you know we we go Embiid, Cameroon, we Cameroon. go Jokic, you know, and yeah. no, uh, and, and and I'm looking around and and the landscape is kind of dry. It's I, Kevin Love. Yeah, it's Kevin Love, <laughs> or you know. DeAndre Jordan, who's up there in years, and he wasn't even able to crack the the, the playing time playing in the, in the playoffs. The, he was a DNT every night. Yes. So I'm not sure where else you could have gone right. with that. AD got hurt. AD's injured. So yeah. you really, he's really one that, of the That would have worked. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you that one. But he's hurt. Yes. And you mentioned a bunch, of, you know, you got Kawhi and you got hurt. Kyrie hurt, hurt. They uh, should have baby Paul George. Maybe Paul, Paul George, George can shoot and can, can defend. Yep, okay, I'll buy that. I don't know if he wanted Maybe he to wanted it, considering yep. that what transpired many years ago, yep. he's like, oh, no, I'm okay. done with that. It, it, it might be that he's done with that. Okay, so now I look at Australia. They're pretty good. And remember, this team will vie for the gold. This, this yeah. is one of the top yeah. three, anyway, yeah. teams going Probably to the team Spain. Yep, okay. So I look at these, and, and again, we got six NBA players, but you got... A guy nobody here knows named Jock Landale, Landale, I'm sorry, Jock Landale, mm -hmm. who's 6'11". I, I didn't know him, had to look him up, but but he played at St. Mary's and was the player of the year in the West Coast Conference. Right. So so he was where Patty Mills went to St. Mary's. Right. So he was pretty good. And then he went back to Australia and he was the MVP of their finals of the Australian Pro League. Right. So He's pretty good, and right. he's six eleven. And then I, a guy who caught my eye last night was that Duop Reith, and he's another six eleven guy who mm -hmm. played at LSU and now plays, I think, in Serbia. Right. But the point is, he's six eleven. Correct. So you got issues with these guys who are taller, who are out rebounding you. Yes. And yet, this is my view of what's going on. Obviously, our NBA season was as escalated and accelerated <laughs> as it has ever been. Yes. So you got guys who are mentally gassed right now who are not flipping the switch yet. Right. And if you don't flip the switch against these guys, it, it's like what Ingles said after the game. We walked into this game expecting to win. And I think they just thought, right. we're just better than these guys are. Hey, Skip, okay? I think the point, the thing is... It means more to them to beat the Americans than the Americans to beat these other teams. Yeah, especially in an exhibition. Yes, yes. Okay, so I, I'm not shocked by the outcome because we played a good half. We, we were up 11 in the first half, then we are up 9 at halftime, and the then we got quarter. blown off the floor in the third quarter because I think we just mailed it in. Yep. 32 to 18 Australia in the third quarter, Correct. and then 22 to 19 when we tried to turn it back up in the fourth quarter. And to your point, I saw too many, way too many backdoor cuts for layups where guys are just literally asleep. Right. Jason Tatum was just like sleepwalking. Yeah, he was. And, and then he had a three that. The air ball. Yeah, and he shot a, air, a corner three air ball that just took the life out of Team USA. And it's, it, it was just, here's the air ball from the corner. And it's just hard to watch because they're not into it. Here we go. Up and... Well, Skip, that's not even close. That, that missed like three feet left. That's a Giannis shot. Yep, that was a Giannis shot. By the way, Giannis is another one. Oh, he's Greek. Greek. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. So to me, I still look at our roster and it's still extremely talented. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure as betting favorites go, they're going to be favored to win every game yes. that they play as when they set foot on the floor. Yep. So, again, Kevin Durant was pretty good last night. He was four of nine from three. And Dame was I thought of Dame was really good, yeah. six, of, six of 11 from three. So, so they went 10 of 20 from three, and it wasn't good enough. Right. Well, that's pretty shocking to me. Bradley Beal had a bad night. He took two threes and missed both of them. And Jason Tatum, again, sleepwalking, went 0 for 6 from 3. Yeah. Well, they canceled out KD right. and, and Dame. Right, because they were the other every, Dame, and, Dame, you're right, Dame and uh, 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 KD was 10 of 20, but everybody else was 3 of 16. Okay, there you go. 
And you look at Australia, and they got points from everywhere from everybody because they're a basketball team. Mm -hmm. And Patty Mills went crazy and scored 10 in the fourth quarter. He's capable of doing that. Oh, he get he, he, he hey, hot, hot. For the, the, the greatest Spurs dynastic teams, he often was the closer right. for those teams. And you remember what he did to your team in yep. 2014? Yep. Shot you right out of the gym in the finals. But also, Skip, if you think about it, the internationals, they allow you to be a little bit more physical. Well, still, let me take that back. A lot more physical. Yep. So you can't sell flops. No. They're not giving you that. And I think the, the, the NBA supers, these guys are used to getting those calls. That, some of the calls that happened last night, that would have been a foul in the NBA. But it's not an international ball. No. Nope. It's a play on. And it, they're looking around, and the referee like, what you want for me? Okay. We're not calling that. So to your point... Our team was led last night in rebounding by Kevin Durant and Damian Lillard, of all players, with four each. Well, that's not good enough, no. and, and that's not going to win gold. No. So, again, that's about want to, to me. That's about desire. That's about effort. That's about heart and guts. And they're not ready to display heart and guts yet because they are treating these games in Las Vegas as they are so named as exhibitions. We've had teams in the past that didn't treat exhibitions this way. If we go back to the 2016 built lead in yeah. to the Olympics, look what we did in our exhibition. We went five and zero. Oh. We won five exhibition games by an average of 41 <laughs> points a game. Well, we weren't even talking about it right. because nobody cared because it was like next to get on to the real right. competition. And for once, and in a first, we have lost our first two exhibition games and lost them both fairly convincingly. Yes. Where they both got out of hand at the end of the game. Right. Well, Nigeria. Nigeria has five guys who have played in the NBA. Yes. And Mike Brown is a very good basketball yeah. coach with NBA pedigree. I'm surprised he didn't get a, a call or two. Like, hey, Mike, are you interested in the job? Okay, you, you could be right. Well, there again, those guys are brother-like. Not yes. as much as the Australians right. are, but brother-like. And they were fighting for God and country. But I, you know? I'm not mistaken, Skip. Three of them play on the same team. Don't three of them play with the Heat? Heat. So they're very mm -hmm. familiar with each other. And a lot of these guys have been playing international ball. Uh, Jason Tatum, this is his first time at the international experience. Yep. It's different, Skip. You know, you grow up playing AAU ball. These guys grow up playing for their country. Their AAU is playing for the, playing for the country is. team. And Gabe Vincent, who does play for the Heat, doesn't do a lot for right. the Heat. He made six of eight threes the other night for Nigeria. If you're going to do that, yeah. it, it's so lethal that it's going to be hard to overcome, and we weren't ready to overcome it. Yeah, Skip, you make, what, they make 23s? If you, if you bomb 23s in the Olympics, you're probably going to win. Exhibition, it doesn't matter. You bomb 23s, you're more times than not, you're going to win that ball game. So I still look at our roster. If you have KD and Damian and Bradley Beal and Jason Tatum and Bam and Zach Levine, and Draymond. I'm, I'm getting to be less and less a Draymond fan, but he does all the things that Popovich loves. Right, skip, skip. But Look what he did. He had five assists, four blocks, and a steal. Uh, That's and, the, and he scored a grand total of one. I okay. look at Draymond in a situation like mm -hmm. this. Anything that he gives you offensively is icing. But you want that. You want the rebounds. You want the block shots. You want him to skip because he's mainly the guy that's initiating the offense. And that is the problem. You need a point. They had magic. They had John Stockton. Yep. The Lakers had guys that could, I mean, not skew, I'm saying the Lakers. And you look at 08, you look at 2012, they had guys that could get guys easier shots. The, everybody, Skip, that you just mentioned is great at what? Getting their own shot. But they're not great at getting anybody else shots. Now, Damon is the best at it because Damon mainly runs the point. But Bradley Beal, that's not what Bradley Beal does. Russ does that. That's not what KD does. James Harden and Kyrie does that. That's not what Jason Tatum does. That's what uh, uh, Kyrie mm -hmm. did before Kimball Walker, yep. uh, Marcus Smart. So yep. you're asking guys to do things that they don't normally do. Okay. So in the end, the competition is clearly stiffer. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and our motivation is clearly less than it's not like the theirs. usual, right? Skip, here's the thing. Whomever wins the gold, if the, let's just say for the sake of argument, the Americans don't win the gold medal. Argentina, they get in a ticker tape parade. Nigeria, they get in a ticker tape parade. Oh, the Aussies, Lord. they oh. get in a ticker tape parade. Oh. If we win the gold medal, what are we getting? You're supposed to. So it's different, Skip. It's a, it's a, it means different things to them as opposed to us because we look at it as we're supposed to. We created the game. 
How the hell we create the game and then y'all get better than that at it than us? Yep. And they just keep getting better. And they keep getting better. Yeah. It's different than and, 92, and we, Skip. And we kind of stay the same, I would say. We stay. Yeah. Skip, you remember when they first we put this thing together in 92? You had a couple. You had Sabonis. You had Marcelona. You had Drazen Petrovic. Mm -hmm. Skip, there were only like, what, five or six international guys. Yeah. Now you got three or four per team. Yeah, it wasn't until Argentina had that band of brothers led yeah. by Manu. Manu, yes. That, that you saw a team from somewhere else right. come together right. and go dominate right. at an Olympics. Right. That right. was shocking to me. Yes. And Skip, the thing about Olympic basketball, guys played longer. I remember the great Oscar Smith from Brazil. Hell, he was damn near 50 playing. Mm -hmm. So these guys have played together. They start playing together at a younger age. They play together longer, so they're more familiar. Yep. Ke this is Kevin Durant's first time playing with Jason Tatum. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is some of these guys' first time ever setting foot on the court together. So it's different. And Popovich said that after the game, we're just trying to figure each other out. Right. And they just got thrown together. And I'm going to remind everybody, I don't know how this will turn out, but on this team right now are supposed to be Devin Booker, Booker. And Chris Middleton and, and Drew Holiday. At least okay. two of those three guys can defend. Okay. I well, don't know. You want to talk about burned out? Yeah, how much gas they well, got well, to take, Skip? What if this does go, which is potential, seven games? Yes. Well, then they're just going to turn right game. around and fly. You yes. know, like like you're, you're going to go pack and fly. <laughs> and, and, and you're going to, pretty soon, it's going it's coming in, what, a little over three weeks? Right. So you going to be ready for that after a, a grueling playoff run and maybe a seven-game finals? Yeah, you better have know. a bag already packed. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know if you can count on any of those three. They hey. might try to suck it up and right. go, and it would certainly help the depth of this team. It would definitely help wing defenders. Drew Holiday can defend. Mm -hmm. Middleton can defend. No, can he? Now, Booker's not much of a defender. He nope. can defend a little bit, but that's not his thing. He's another scorer. He's another shooter. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need more shooters. I think we need guys to defend. I think we need guys to rebound the basketball. But like you said, where are we going to get that from? Uh, you know any six-foot, seven-foot Americans? No. I don't. Nope. The mere fact that they got Kevin Love on the team lets you know how depleted we are at bigs in America. I'll give you that. But we do have one quote unquote big who, who plays seven feet tall if he's not quite seven. He's he's like seven seven in length. Yeah. And his name is Kevin Bleepin Durant. Yeah. And he is the best player on the planet. And he is a clutch closer. And I just think you haven't seen him clutch close yet because he's just pacing himself for Tokyo and what's going to happen when it, it starts for real. And I'm sure he's still a little drained from what happened in a seven-game playoff series that went to the bitter end for him and his nets. But you know how this works, Skip. Mm -hmm. The other countries are looking around, oh, they could be got. Maybe. <laughs> Man, it was, not, not, uh, the Aussies beat them. Nigeria beat them. Yep. They could be had. This might be our year. Mm. That's how that's how teams start looking at it. Yeah. You see what happened, I think, the year before in the lead-up, Skip, Argentina had beaten America before they got to the Olympics. Yeah. So now that gives them the confidence. Skip, before that, we had lost. 92, 96, 2000, we wiping the floor with everybody. And then you messed around and lost, and you lose that era of invincibility. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, that's our time right now. We can get them. Mm. And that's, Skip, There's I don't care whomever else wins. The, as long as you beat the Americans, mm-hmm. Skip, you good. Okay, so I don't want to come off as jingoistic about we just dominate because we're born to dominate. Because exactly. that's not what's happening here. But Kevin Durant, every time he steps on the floor, is going to be the best player yes. on the floor. Yes. And there's going to be huge pressure on him. And he's, he's served our country well many times in the past, so this isn't a, his first time. Correct. And I'm a little surprised he's he committed to even make this right, run right. at his advancing right. age. But he did. Right. And because he did, I'm going to believe in him and I'm going to trust that he will bring gold home. So that's my gut feeling is if, if I got Kevin Durant, I'm golden. You know what it was, Skip? What's going on right now? A far, another country wins the gold medal. It's the equivalent of the U.S. hockey team what they did in the 80 and late sure. classic. That's the equivalent. Mm -hmm. there's, no way there's no way you're supposed to beat the Russians. There's no way, and mm -hmm. I think they beat 
either Finland or Sweden in the championship match because that was to get to the fight, the gold medal round. Okay, but direction. remember, we didn't have any pros at right, that that's point. That's what I'm saying. They had been drafted, but they weren't professional hockey players. But they still said but, that's but the great. now all these other teams have. Right. Australia has six NBA well, players. Well, they were sending professionals for the longest time, and we were sending we were sending our college kids yep. until they got beat in 88 and sold. That okay. was a David Robinson-led team. And okay. they said, hold on, wait a minute. Y'all sending pros, we sending college kids. Mm. They said, oh, no more. 92, we got something for you. Okay, so maybe I'm now speaking with my red, white, and blue heart, <laughs> but I am willing to bet you five cases of Diet Mountain Dew that we win gold. I, I ain't bet against America. Why not? Because. You just can't well, you're do like that. that. You'd bet against America. No, I wouldn't. Yeah? Huh? You'd do anything to get do, even. Do, 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 no? In some things, I would. Yeah. But no. not in basketball. Okay. What about tonight, USA versus uh, Argentina? Bet on that? I don't Ooh. know. Manu play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no mercy. Well, Giannis has clearly shaken off any rust and doubt following the knee injury he sustained before the NBA Finals. The Bucks star became the second player ever to generate at least 40 points and collect 10 rebounds in back-to-back -back Finals outings. The only other player to do so was Shaq. And now Giannis and Milwaukee are on the heels of Phoenix heading into Game 4 as they look to tie the series tomorrow night. Got that extra day of rest in. Shannon, on a scale of 1 to 10, how sold are you on Giannis as a playoff superstar? I'm a 10. Um, I, the way I judge it, Skip, the way I look at it is that once you become a superstar, even if you don't perform at that level in the playoff, you're still a superstar. We just judge you more harshly. We just critique you with a sterner voice. And that's what we're doing with Giannis because we saw what he did in the regular season in the process of winning those two MVPs. And the numbers that he put up come playoff time didn't match what he had did in the regular that, uh, what he did in the regular season and so that's why we judge him so harsh skip for a guy that can't do this he can't shoot threes he doesn't do have a great mid-range he's terrible at the free throw lines the guy has two final he has two regular season MVPs he's a three or four time first team all NBA he's a defensive player of the year that's a huge accomplishment for a lot of guys that people to say that can't okay so for me he's a 10 y Giannis is we're talking about the playoffs, playoffs yes a consistent trustable dependable playoff superstar you're a 10 he's play, skip granted if you look at what he did um prior to him getting to toronto he played unbelievable you like okay yeah okay Giannis is doing it and, and then he got to toronto they did a great job two years ago, two years ago yeah. they built the wall we saw what miami did and by but, the way toronto won four straight off one four, one okay. four straight but it was an aberration because they turned around and then ended up winning the finals see skip if we look at a team and they're like okay they beat Giannis, and then all of a sudden they flame out the next round, but that's not what they did. They went on and won it all. So it wasn't like Toronto was a trash team, and they had Kawhi, who many at that time said was well, a top two or top three player. So it wasn't like he got beat by a bunch of run, a, a, a rag tags. Mm. For me, I look at it like this. Giannis is a, tr a, a tremendous player, and it does not matter what he does. If the other two guys don't come along, we saw Kevin Durant skip. That last game, if he'd have got any help from anybody else, we wouldn't be having this conversation because Giannis wouldn't even be in the playoffs. Kevin Durant would. Just like when he had that historic night, that 49, 17, and 10, mm -hmm. it was Jeff, quietly Jeff Green's 8 of 9 from the 3 that helped get Kevin Durant across the finish line. If I'm not mistaken, Blake Griffin had he, 17 he, or 19. He was good. I've seen enough. I know what Giannis is. Yes, Skip, he doesn't have the flair. It's not pretty. See, guys go forward, and we wanted to be like Kobe. The thing where he just let three uh, uh, stamp for Dame or Mike glide through the air, coming up on the one side and under his tongue mm -hmm. hanging out. Skip, Giannis is never going to be that. His game is never going to be aesthetically pleasing. It's going to be a lot of dunks and a lot yep. of layups. They're like, man, I don't want to see no dunk. Shoot the three because the dunk is not what it used to be. It's the three-point shot. It's the acrobatic shot. But I'm a 10 on Giannis as a uh, playoff MVP. Okay. Uh, excuse me. A playoff superstar. Yeah. Okay. I am not going to back down. I'm not going to back off. It's too early yet to say it's over, it's done, because I remind everybody, Milwaukee is still down two games to one. Yeah, they definitely got to win wins to make it and serious. Milwaukee, I remind everyone, lost a game one by, what was it, 13, and game two by 10. Yeah, correct. So that was a minus 23. Then they won game three. They were highly impressive at home by 20. Correct. There's still a minus three in point differential correct. for this series, mm -hmm. down two games to one. So this concept amuses me because 
in my career, I've, I've had this sort of impact or effect where I dig in on a player <laughs> and maybe I'm harshly, over harshly objective and I, I have nothing against Giannis. I'm just not buying in yet. Right. And if you back to Jenny's question, scale of one to ten, I'm I'm like a four in trustability as a superstar. Somebody I can trust every night to be a playoff superstar to carry this team to this championship. He may make me eat all of these words I'm uttering right now, but I'm not ready to say no. I'm not, I'm not ready to back off and give in to this because in my career, sometimes I dig in so hard on a player that I turn them into sympathetic figures. And all I see on media reports that I just get barraged with is, it's time to give Giannis his due. And I feel like a lot of it is aimed at me. <laughs> like, it's time to quit slandering this man's name. Right. Well, I'm not slandering his name. I'm just saying, I'm sorry. I, history would scream at you right now. You better be careful. Well, you look at it like, okay, if Giannis is what those regular season MVP says he is, he should be able to go further come playoff time than what he's been able to take Milwaukee. Okay, so his overall playoff record, as we speak right now, is 33 and 28. Well, it it, it doesn't measure up to back-to-back -back MVPs right. or Defensive Player of the Year. Right. And again, I, I don't want to beat this to death, but just being completely, utterly, maybe over harshly objective, I look at his playoff flameouts. In his first three playoff runs, he, he lost, you know, obviously they got knocked out. and He lost four games in the first year by 21 points a game. Mm -hmm. He was the average loss. The next time it was by 11 a game. The next time by 10 a game. So they weren't even coming close in their four losses to get knocked out. And then came the debacle of a disaster of a huge disappointment, which was the four straight losses to Ka uh, Kawhi's Toronto. And I don't even want to belabor the numbers, but all of his MVP caliber, he'd, he'd won the MVP in the regular Right. season. He, he, he couldn't shoot. He couldn't make free throws. He was shooting too many threes and, and shooting 19% from three. And you know what happened? They just dared him to shoot 10 foot jump shots. Right. And he, he just doesn't let, have that. But let me ask you a question. If we'd had social media back in the eighties and people have asked you, where are you are on Michael Jordan as a, as a playoff superstar, mm -hmm. what would you have said? Because in his first 10 playoff games, he was one in nine. So if they had asked you that question about Jordan, where would you have been? I could already see it coming. Cause I saw 63 against Larry Bird and company but he lost, at, Skip. at the garden. It you can't see this gone. coming. You skip. Yeah. You saw it back to back 40 point ball game. There have right. been very few people that can say, you know what? I've got a 40 piece in the playoffs, mm -hmm. let alone back to back. Okay. I had seen Michael Jordan as a true freshman at North Carolina, take the shot to win the game, the national championship game. I was sitting on press row courtside yes. against Georgetown, yes. Patrick Ewing and yes. company. I saw him make that shot. Who's Mike Jordan? Yeah. Oh, Michael Jordan. But he wasn't even the best okay. player on the fleet team. That was James Worthy. But I also saw in 19... Well, I don't know. I, yeah. I think it was. I think they were all looking sideways like he, he's taking over. I also saw, um, if you don't mind, believe, believe this, I saw Purvis Ellison mm -hmm. lead LSU, uh, LSU mm -hmm. Louisville I to the there. national I as sitting, a true freshman. I was sitting courtside in Dallas, And Texas. everybody would have bet. Yep. Everybody would have bet. Purvis Ellison is the next big thing. It doesn't necessarily mean that, Skip. There's a lot of guys that play great yeah. in college, and it doesn't translate. Nobody saw Michael Jordan being this. Okay, but we're eight years in, yes. to be honest. And we skipped over the bubble trouble that he had because they lost the first three to Miami and he was, he was abominable. There. Yes. And then he got hurt and it didn't really matter because they're already down 0-3. Correct. And so he's had a fairly lengthy history in the postseason of not being trustable. And then now he's starting to take off. And, and I listen, I, against Brooklyn, the, James Harden was just, I, I don't even know why he was out there. He wasn't even trying to score. He wasn't trying to move, and I don't know how bad his hamstring was, but the point was, when, when he didn't go, and when Joe Harris completely disappeared, unless somebody else, like Jeff Green or Blake, who, Blake whoever else, stepped up, mm -hmm. there are other candidates too, but it was basically one on five. But think about what you just said. You just said if Jeff Green and Blake Griffin, and because Joe Harris was un, was, basically couldn't throw, throw the ball in the ocean, mm -hmm. he couldn't do anything. Well, what about Giannis? 
When Chris Middleton and when those other guys before he got, when he had Bledsoe okay. and he had those other guys when they weren't doing it, you don't see, my thing is, Skip, you don't hold the other superstars to the same standard when they don't play well, when their team doesn't win, that you hold Giannis. I saw Kevin Durant by himself single-handedly carry them in game five and in game seven. No, he didn't, Skip. Yes, he it did. It was Jeff Green's 27. Okay, okay but, but he put up virtuoso numbers. Yes. Okay, and all the big shots down the stretch he took and made. Did you not see what he did in game two? Who? Giannis against Phoenix. Game two, they lost. They lost. Why? Okay. Because Holiday and Middleton did not play well. He gave you 40 and 15. Yep, but it, it never got even close. It never felt like that the Bucks had a chance to win the game. And with Kevin Durant at the controls, with him operating one on five, I just kept thinking, Brooklyn's just gonna win this thing because he was taking the game over in ways I don't see Giannis take it over. So they had their 20 point win the other night. He didn't and, take the game over? Okay, no he did not because there were two runs. I dare you to go look at the two runs. Right. There's, there's a big run at the end of the mm -hmm. first half. And go look and see what happened. In that big run, he scored two of the points. Right. And then there's a bigger run in the third quarter, 24-6 to six run that put the game away. Go look at what happened. Drew Holiday scored or assisted on 22 of the 24 points. He did not fuel either of those big runs. He's one of those weird players. He scores a lot of points. He gets a lot of bunnies, like he'll get the offensive rebound. He'll reach over the, the somebody's head and snatch the ball and just lay it back off the glass. And he scored, it was an all-time feat that what he pulled off because he scored 14 field goals within five feet of the basket. Nobody in the last 25 years of playoffs or regular season right. has been able to accomplish that while scoring 30 or more points. Right. All 14 of your field goals come within five feet of the basket, and, and more power to them, because right. the closer the better. That's yeah. the object of the game. Well, I mean, right? people make it seem like Shaq was just throwing up three. Okay, Where did Shaq's points come from? Okay. And nobody held that against Shaq. No. But we hold, we hold Giannis Duncan and laying the ball up against him when we didn't do that for other bigs. Shaq okay. was dominant, but Shaq wasn't, Shaq wasn't throwing 17-foot uh, sky hooks like he Kareem. He was not. He was not. But I... I covered all those big Shaq games in yes. 2001, 02, yes. that run when he was the most dominating offensive force I ever saw. And it was hard to watch because it was football, basketball. Right. It was impossible to referee. And yet, when it was time to get a bucket down the stretch, yes. if you needed to close the game, you just kept dumping it into him right. because they just couldn't stop it. Well, that, well, that's, what, well that's what they do to Giannis. Let me ask you a question. I didn't hear Chris Paul say, we need to build a wall for Middleton. We need to do something special against Holiday. We need to do something special against Bobby Porter. He said, we need to build a wall for who? We need to build a fence for who? Okay. Skip, 42 on 22 attempts in game two. 41 on 23 attempts uh, uh, in game three. Jordan needed 79 attempts to get his first two a back-to-back 40-point game mm -hmm. in the NBA Finals. This kid did it in 45 attempts. I know, because they're point blank. There are a lot of layups and dunks. Yeah! Yeah, but they count the same. They do count the same. Chris Paul uttered those words after the game the other night because he was ashamed that he knows the playoff history of how Giannis can be stopped. Yes. And they ain't doing it. Correct. And, and it's almost like a message to our head coach or our staff like, hey, can't we figure out what everybody else has figured right. out in the past, but, the way to take him out of the game? Skip, that's not Giannis. Giannis' job is not to say, okay, they're not building a wall, so let me not go. I'm going to get down here until you keep me out of this restricted area. I'm going down here. I'm going to lay the ball up. Aiton is in foul trouble. Y'all yep. got these small guys trying to guard me. I'm just going to go over your back, get the rebound, put it back, and one. Mm -hmm. Skip, look, look, I mean, you, you think about how many guys have had 40-point games in finals. Okay. Jerry West has 10. Blarn has 8. Jordan has 6. Shaq 5. Elgin Baylon down the line from that. Giannis has 2. This is his first finals. Yep. Okay. And he may have another one. If if Phoenix can't figure out how to stop him, yes. he well could have another one. Yes. And it well could be 2-2 two two going back to Phoenix. Exactly. So I will be the first to admit, it's possible Giannis just isn't my cup of tea. He's because I, I just don't... Like, you like artistic skill. Okay, and, and I... Listen... When he, he had that wide-open dunk after 
P.J. Tucker went and, remember, Brooke Lopez airballed right. it, and P.J. Tucker just gutted saved it out and, it and saved it mm-hmm. and kicked it back. And here comes Giannis charging down the lane right. wide open and dunks it. And he, here we are. And he goes back up the floor mean mugging, like, <laughs> really? I, I mean, it's just silly. It's like childish to me. It's not how superstars behave yeah, in my get, point get, of hey, view. Hey, no, no, you yeah. got to get the crowd into it. Okay, mean mug on that. Boy, that was something that Ooh, you got off. Woo, you dunked it wide open. Way to go. And then I've never seen a quote-unquote superstar who hyperventilates early in games. <laughs> they have to pull him out and sit him down so he can get his breath. Yeah. you got to regain your breathing power. Yeah. Calm down. Yes. Just calm down. He because, so he okay, he is so amped. And so there's part of that that I appreciate. But when we're talking about superstar, killer will, take over Gene. I just don't see it, so he's not my style of superstar. But he may make me eat all my words if he continues to score 40 a game. He Well, if, if he stays on this pace, let's see, what would it take? They've won one. So if he has three more games in a row right. of 40 points, well, he's going to shatter all the right. records, and he will be the runaway MVP of this series. Well, Skip, right now he's averaging 34 and 14 yep. on 62% shooting. Okay. That, that pretty. So even if he doesn't get for it, if he just gets you his average, mm-hmm. that's pretty damn good. Skip, you like Frank Sinatra? Ernestein loves Frank Sinatra. You know Frank Me, Sinatra? I'm okay with him. Yeah. You skip, he didn't have power yeah. techniques. He mm-hmm. didn't have a whole big group behind him. Mm-hmm. He just came and sat on the stool, smoked him a cigarette and sung. Mm-hmm. As basic as you can get. He did it his way. As right. basic as you can get. Mm. But now you look at Michael. You look at Prince. You look at Beyonce. Mm-hmm. Same thing. It's still effective. Mm. That's Giannis. Mm. He ain't going to fly through the air. He ain't going to light no threes up. He's not going to be acrobatic. You were the first and the last in the history of the world to compare Giannis <laughs> to Frank Sinatra. <laughs> you, give up, boy, you give up point. <laughs> sort of. I kind of like it. I like Frank, Frank Sinatra. Somewhere Ernestine is cringing. Yeah, we need Ernestine to weigh in on that, Shannon. I don't know. Uh, okay, good. you report back to us, Skip. Uh, this is totally going back to the fight and the aftermath from Saturday. There is certainly no love lost between Khabib and Conor McGregor, guys. I want to catch you up on the latest. After McGregor's loss to Dustin Poirier, which we all watched, Khabib said, quote, when money and fame come, these two things show who you are. And what has McGregor done with him? No, I don't believe he'll return to the top. Conor has good age, 32, but what happened with his mind? Legs, this guy is finished, but he's good for promotion. He said a lot there. Shannon, do you agree with Khabib's sentiment? Hell, I said it. I said it yesterday. I've been saying it. And then basically, and that's so true. Money doesn't, money makes you more of what you already are. If you a jerk, you become a bigger jerk. Yep. It's simple as that. Money just makes you more of what you already are. If you were not a good person and you get money, you will become a worse person. Money and power corrupts people. Yep. It makes them more of what they already are. It says, he said, this is what he is. And for, for it takes a special type of person to have, to, in that sport, to have that kind of resources in his bank account. Mm. And says, you know what? I still have that same drive. Mm. Skip, remember, you know, he used to have to fly coach. Night five private everywhere he goes. Mm-hmm. He used to have to stay in CD motels if and when he could afford to go on vacation. Not as private jets, not as yachts, not as five star hotels. He's eating Michelin meals. That's a whole different ball game. And like Khabib said, he's still young, but where is his mind? Because in this sport, your mind is everything. I agree with Khabib. I do not believe Connor will return to what he once was because I do not see the evolution that it takes to remain a top fighter. All these fighters that he fought once fought has evolved. Tell me the one thing that Connor has gotten better at in the octagon Mm -hmm. since 2015. One thing, Skip, as what what did did Khabib say? He still can sell a fight. He still can do that, Skip. He's box office because he can convince you that, oh, man, Carter going to get him. Mm. Ooh, Carter going to knock him out. Carter say he going to do all this. He do all that trash talking, talking about the man's wife, talking about what he going to do. He going to put a hole in his head. He getting carried out the ring. And people believe it because he's very convincing. Mm. But three of the last four fights, I've seen the man sitting on his butt, looking around like what happened. Mm. He got choked out, and he was about to get pummeled again. Yep. Because remember now, he was not standing on his feet 
when they stopped this. He was sitting on his butt after Poirier had gotten up from elbowed him like 10 times in his face. Poirier let him up so he could finish him off man to man, face to face, feet to feet. Skip, I don't, I don't see him returning to what he once was. Could he yeah. fight? I mean, if you're going to put him in there with some, but the top level fighters in yeah. that division, nah, I don't see it. Oh, so first of all, forgive me for this, but I'm going to pronounce it hubby because hubby. I think we're supposed to, but whatever, it's okay. Right. I think we Americanized it to compete. Skip, I actually, I played with a guy. But he didn't have the K in front of it. It oh. was Brian Habib. Okay, well, and there you go. He, and so I Whatever. guess theoretically it could I, be. I don't know. I thought is, the K think, was solid. I think either one's fine, but I'm going to say Habib. But so hopefully I'm not. we're not offending him by saying Habib. Uh, either way, either way. I have nothing but respect for this man because you can make a case he was the greatest ever. Mm -hmm. And I assume he's retired because this is one guy when he says I've retired. Right. That you can take it to your bank. Again, maybe money talks him out right. of retirement, but I don't think so. He, he made a big case that when my father's gone and his father is gone, right. that I, I don't fight anymore. Right. And his mother does not want him right. to fight. Right, mom asked him to. So all these words are gold to me, mm -hmm. what he's saying. And this is a deep thinking young man who, who's making the case that you have made from jump, which is money doesn't change you, it exposes you. Yes. Okay. And he, he makes the case that what has he done? He punched an old guy, and that was in a bar in 2019, because that, that's what he did. After <laughs> right. he got his money, yeah. he punched the guy out right. in the bar. Right. I don't know how. There's some suit pending somewhere right. about that. So I don't want to be a hypocrite because I, you know, I bought into a lot of Connor's pre-fight hype building up to the Floyd event mm -hmm. because it was mega event. Right. It, it's some of the most exciting times I've we've had on this show. Right. And I found Connor very appealing because he was winning. Trey. And, and I could accept all the pre fight trash talk Antics. because I just sort of, it, it made me laugh right. instead of making me mad. Right. And yet, once he, he made his whatever, 100 million that he made. For Floyd. And, and I thought he was great against Floyd. That's just me yeah. because I thought he stood toe to toe with mm -hmm. him and he exchanged and it, he lasted 10 rounds. Mm -hmm. And Floyd is difficult because Floyd, at that point, Floyd was still in shape and ready to yes, fight. He yes. took that fight very seriously. Yes. Okay, so now we get to Habib. He, he's saying that if the MMA community is going to support this kind of person, then this sport is going to go in a bad way. Well, I think we just crossed the line, especially on Saturday night. Right. And I tweeted that immediately. I, I can't defend my guy Connor anymore right. because obviously against Habib, pre Habib, he, he insulted his faith and his wife. Yes. And his parenting. He, yes. he went after everything Everybody, he could yes. go after. And he nearly got killed because of that. <laughs> exactly. Because if, if there hadn't been a referee there to yeah. stop it, uh, I and think, he didn't let him go immediately. No. He was still squeezing. He would have squeezed the life right out <laughs> he of would him. Have. And then here we go again with Poirier, and I had no idea that he had detonated such hate in Poirier because I just sort of, it, it goes in one ear and out the other right. before the fight with right. the hype, but, but he's insulting his wife. Yes. And I didn't know if Poirier would laugh at that, but he didn't laugh at no, it. No, he didn't think that's funny. No, there was nothing funny about it to him, so he was taking it out on Connor. So Connor is, is defeating himself with right. his pre-fight hype talk, right. his trash talk, because he can no longer back it up. Right. Uh, Ali, listen, what Ali did to Joe Frazier in Manila ahead right. of that fight, I thought it crossed the line. Maybe, it, again, that's more from your call yeah, than mine, it, but, it, yeah. but it was racial insults of right. Joe Frazier, and it was so demeaning and so belittling right. that it made me cringe. Right. Like, Mohammed, you're better than that, right? right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to reach for that or right. resort to that. Right. Just fight. Right. Well, they fought, man. Yeah. They nearly killed each other. They did. And, and it went to the bitter end, and, and Ali was ready to throw in the towel, and Angelo Dundee said, no, right. I think he's not going to be able to come right. out. I think you got to stand you know, like up. Joe just threw in the towel yeah, first. he just <laughs> threw it in. So you got to stand up and act like you're going to walk right. out there, and you're going to win the fight. Right. And he did, and both of them went up in the hospital. Yes. So my point is, at least Ali was still able to back it up. Mm -hmm. Connor not able to back no. it up. And then the most chilling point that Habib made was that when you break a leg like that, you're never going to be the same no. with your kicking. He just said, 
I, I get it that his age is not bad yet. Mm -hmm. right. He just turned, is it, what is today? He's 33. Uh, 33. Yeah. He's, what, what is today? Uh, I'm losing track 18, of the days. July 18th. Okay. 30. Yeah. 33 30. tomorrow. The day tomorrow. of 13. Yeah. Okay. So he Excuse turns me. 33 tomorrow, tomorrow Wednesday. Correct. And it's it's not too old, but he just lost a whole, I think a there's going to be a calendar year of recovery And that was this. one of the things that worked against him because he was right. inactive. For yeah, such a long time. Skip, what is it, four fights in like five years? Yes. I mean, MMA fights, but obviously I he know. fought the one time against uh, uh, Floyd. Yeah. But we're, if we're not counting that, if we're saying four MMA fights in five years. So yeah. now he's about to be out for another year. Right, so you have a rod in your tibia, yeah. and you have a plate and screws in your fibula. You mm -hmm. broke both of your yes. lower leg bones. Yeah. Well, that's hard to bounce back yes. from. This is this might even be worse than Dax's injury. Yeah, it, it might even be beyond yes. that. So my point is, it, 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 uh, you know, Habib knows what he's talking about here. That, that he'll never kick the same because no. he'll never trust with that leg. Absolutely I think it's his not. Left leg that, that you can let it fly. Exactly. Right. And it's, it's, <laughs> we look at this. And so this is the first time in his career he's lost back to back. And it says in 2000, 2021, he was the highest paid athlete. He made $120 million over 12 months. His UFC earnings were $22 million. So, Skip, what? what? So, I made, I mean, he made $158 million outside of the ring. He has a global net worth of $400 million. And you tell me a man <laughs> that's worth that kind of money fighting that has the same ferocity, has the same desire to get up and do that over and over again. I'm not so sure guy, if any other guy had that kind of wealth, they would walk away immediately. They would, from this. Yes. This is the hardest. Skip, the whole way, the reason why you do this, Skip, is to make enough money so you can quit doing this. Yep. You did this out of necessity. How many people say, you know what, man, I think MMA, that's the, I'm growing up, you know what, the only thing I ever want to be is an MMA fighter. Really? If I got choices and I can make it and make the same kind of money doing something else, I'm not choosing that. Mm. And then once I get that level of money, I'm done immediately. Mm. So, Habib concludes, he'll still sell. And, and I think you believe that, because I know that. He yes. will still sell. Yes. If a year from now, they announce... Connor Poirier four. Yes. That pe some people will buy it. Yes. Fewer will buy it. Yes. I'll buy it. You'll buy it. Yep. But you could argue we have to buy it because we're going to we we comment on right. it. Right. But but I love I love him as an entertainer because he's he's as entertaining a performer in sports right. that I've ever seen. But all of a sudden, what was so entertaining became just disturbing and and repulsive right. after the fight. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I think he's crossed the line. Remember before. The, the Poirier Four. fight, the second one in January, Connor was on his best behavior. It's like a new man. Right. He had grown up, and he had nothing but nice things to say about Poirier. Right. And then here we go again. Yeah, I, I, I agree with Khabib. I don't see how you kick the same. I yep. remember when Anderson Silva broke his leg kicking uh, Chris Weidman. Ooh. I think Luke Rock Rocco just broke his leg. Skip, how you be and I Weidman. Uh, yeah. I, how? How, you, how do you kick the same knowing, mm. man? And I didn't even really kick him that hard, and it snapped like a twig. I ain't using that leg. I'm not using that, that leg to do anything but walk on. Mm -mm. <laughs> if it don't require me walking, I ain't using it to do anything else. I ain't kicking nobody with that. Mm. And you got that kind of money? For what? You mm. not just... First of all, you're, you're, you have an evolved. You're a one-dimensional fighter. So that's working against you. You're going to so have layoff again. Can that's you working argue against you. that... One day, Conor McGregor will look back at his career and regret that he boxed Floyd at that point in his no, career? No, because, Skip, I'm not so sure that he would have had the money to invest in proper 12. Well, he wouldn't have. So, no. Okay, no, no, but, no, no. but that's the beginning of the end, because to your point, that's going to accelerate your exit from the sport. That's okay, that's fine, but it also accelerated my wealth. It also well, accelerated okay. the generational wealth right. that my kid, kids are going to be able to enjoy, because that's what, I mean, why you, why you do this? If it's not to make money and secure your family for an extended period of time, well, why the hell are you doing this? Okay. Unless you just love to compete. Yeah, I love to compete. Uh, I play cards. I shoot <laughs> dice. I shoot pool. I no. play table tennis. I ain't got to get kicked in my face to compete. You will not play table tennis. So I'm, I'm the champ. You You're the champ? <laughs> I'm the champ. I should be going to the Olympics right now. To I don't know about that. Uh, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, you didn't know that you should call me the fan of table tennis. I, I, was, I was grateful with that thing. Really? Are you for real right now? Oh, yeah. It looks pretty natural. You better, ask about, you better ask about me at Savannah State. At Savannah State? Savannah State. We that was a long time ago. Someone needs to send oh, us and, footage. And, and, uh, we played, we had a table tennis when, uh, in the Super Bowl. We all had table tennis, shoot pool, ping pong, all mm -hmm. this. Yeah, skip. Mm. Pinball machines. Oh, that table tennis. But now I'm the joke.
Let's I'm make this happen. I want to see really? in action. Yep. You huh. should be heading to the Olympics, Shannon. I, I, I could be heading to the Olympics. Well, I'll bring back gold medal in table tennis. Did you have a foam paddle? I had a, uh, no. Nah. Skip, back then, they didn't have the phone, right? Mm. They had the, uh, the uh, sandpaper. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I need to Rocking. see this. <laughs> Beating those offensive linemen? No, 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 no. Offensive linemen are better than you think. <laughs> it's the skill. I ain't playing offensive line. That was easy. That was easy. No mercy. Well, we're going to get to the Cowboys in just a second. But first, Shohei Otani will be the showman of the MLB All-Star Game. The Angels sensation will be starting on the mound and will bat lead off for the American League squad as they battle the National League at 7 p.m. Eastern tonight on Fox. Shannon, is he going to revolutionize baseball? I believe he's the anomaly, Skip. Mm. Uh, we, no, because I, I think the thing is, Skip, the, 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 the team will force you to choose. Either you're going to be a pitcher, you got a 100-mile-an-hour fastball, you're going to pitch, you're not going to be hitting. Yeah. Unless there's a stimulating circumstance and you run out of position players and you have to come to the bat, you know, mm -hmm. come to the uh, plate and hit. Mm -hmm. uh, or and if you great at hitting and batting mm -hmm. and can throw play to center, play to, uh, uh, position, yep. you're going to have to, you're probably going to have to choose. But I think he was a very unique situation. And I think him being a foreign player, he said, the only way Way I'm coming is that you allow me to do both. And so they were caught between a rock and a hard place because somebody, if, if the Angels didn't do it, someone else was going to allow him to do it. And he's shown because, you know, you play, you pitch every fifth day and he's a DH, and so you're playing basically every day. You know, how much would that zap him? And so, but I don't think you're going to see all of a sudden these guys popping up wanting to be Shohei Atani. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. Skip the mere fact that it's like he's a modern day. The mere fact that we're mentioning him and Babe Ruth tells you just how special this young man is. Mm -hmm. He has power. Freakish. That, that yeah. we haven't seen in a long time. You're talking about for a, a Japanese-born player. He's already the, the single-season leader, and we're at the midway point. Yep. He broke Hideki Matsui's record. Mm -hmm. I think Hideki had 31-32, mm -hmm. and he's already at 33. Yep. So, But, Skip, I, I think this is an anomaly. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to see an a uprising, an upspring of guys saying, you know what? I want to bat, and I want to pitch in the major right. leagues. I don't believe that's going to happen. Okay. I believe it should not be an anomaly. Did you play high school baseball? I did I not. I can't remember. Okay, so I did. I was pretty good. I made all area after my senior year. But what I always saw in my years in high school baseball was the pitchers we faced were often the best hitters that we that, had to true. get out. That's true. Because they were the best athlete on the field. Yes. They chose to throw because they had the best arm, but they also had, and many times, mm -hmm. the most power. Yes. So that's not an anomaly. Right. And then when I went to Vanderbilt, we won the SEC all four years I was there. But our arch rival was University of Tennessee, and the best hitter in the a SEC those four years mm -hmm. was a kid named Rick Honeycutt, mm -hmm. who was also one of the best pitchers. Yeah. So he goes on to the big leagues and makes two all-star teams and is the ERA champ in 1983 because right. he could really pitch. He hey, he's right. A's and Dodgers mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Rangers for mm -hmm. a year, mm -hmm. but he became the Dodgers pitching coach for many years up through 2019. But right. my point is, he he, he could have done this. Right. He wasn't a, what you call a power hitter, but right. man, he could hit for average. Right. He, he was the SEC batting champ mm -hmm. my senior year. Right. So my point is, when you get to the big leagues, our, our thinking is so prehistoric. It they is. just say you have to choose. Right, right. But in it Japan, is. at 18, he decided to play pro baseball in Japan right. for a few years. Right. And right away, they're more open-minded. And they're like, okay. hmm, we hmm. don't have these conventional wisdom right. that, you know, that we've dug in on. Right. And they said, sure. Because he's a big, he's almost 6'4", and he have, has natural gifted power, yeah. and he can throw it 100 miles an right. hour. Why not? Yes. But it, uh, on in MLB, they think, no, you're, you're going to shortchange yourself one way or the other. Correct. And look at what happened to Babe Ruth. He was great for the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> and then when he got traded to the Yankees, they're like, you got to stop this. Right. Well, one year he was the best pitcher in baseball. Right. And then he became the best hitter <laughs> of all time up through that point. Right. right? Because yes. the Yankees said, no, our box office says we need you to hit the ball out, out of, of the park. park. Correct. Which is what he did. I'm just hoping the floodgates reopen for a lot of kids out there who at the high school level are dominating as hitters and pitchers, and I don't know why they can't keep on keeping well, Skip, on. if you think about it, think about football. Yep. The best athletes used to play offense. They did. Defense. Both. <laughs> they, Agreed. They were a quarterback or they were a DB or they were something, and then when they got to college, they said, no, nah, you play one or the other, choose one, there offense or defense. That and, is and Dion was, De I mean, Dion, I believe Dion could have played both, Absolutely. but it's like, you know what, Dion, we really need you on the other side of the ball. We'll give you a few reverses, yep. throw you a few passes, but I, I think that's going to be the case. You look at Tampa. Skip, they don't even let the pitcher go, what, past seven innings? Yeah. And a lot of 
It used to be pitchers through 150, 160 pitches. Everybody's now, a specialist. I agree. Right. Yep. You got guys. Okay, you got guys coming from the sixth, the seventh, yep. the eighth. Then you got a closer. We, we, uh, uh, Gary Cole threw 129 pitch, a complete game. That used to be commonplace. Yep. Okay. So can't wait until tonight because I get to watch this young man pitch and lead off. That's all you know? I want. Yeah. I, Kevin, I ain't gonna lie. I probably just watch him do that. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I, I want to see him yeah. pitch. No, get, no, that, get out no. of the inning. Mm -hmm. Then hit. Hope he hits it over the fence. Thing. I really root for him last night. I, I wanted was to win. Too. He was just trying too hard. But Pete Alonso. Good God. Wow. Good Lord, it was great to watch. So tonight, All Star Game, 7 p.m. Eastern on Fox. And when you watch Shohei Otani, he's just playing with this joy. It's yeah. like you can't look away because he's making it look easy. We know it's not. 33 home runs. I, I just can't get enough of him. I cannot get enough of what he's doing, and I cannot wait to see it on display on Fox tonight. Uh, we're going to get to the Cowboys now. We're going to see them plenty on Fox this season as well. But heading into his second year with the Cowboys, Mike McCarthy will be eager to put a 6-10 uh, and ten season in his rearview mirror. He'll have Dak Prescott back under center, which will take some added pressure away as they'll appear on Hard Knocks. This will be Dallas's third appearance on the hit show. Remember that. Former Cowboys coach Dave Campo thinks the show is invasive, though, and an unnecessary hurdle for McCarthy as he looks to right the ship. Shannon, do you agree with Campo here? No, it's just another excuse for why they're not going to be good. That has nothing to do with it, Skip. It's not going to, it's hard for me to imagine that because there are cameras there every day. Well, you film everything anyway, um, that all of a sudden it affects your blocking, your tackling, your throwing, your catching. That's not going to have anything. The hard knocks is not going to be the reason the Cowboys finish 8-9 and nine or 9-8. Nine and eight. That won't be the reason. And don't make excuses. I understand that. But you have to understand, Skip, Jerry have always put this in front of winning. Jerry has always wanted more commas than Lombardi trophies. I got no problem with it. I just see it for what it is. Mm. So I, I'm not here to make no excuses. Talk about well, if they don't, if this doesn't happen, it's because of hard knocks. No, skip 12, 10 of the past 12 hard knocks teams that improved. They either improved or equal the win total from the previous year. Six teams made the playoffs. We did it in the 01. The Bengals in nine and 13. The Jets in 2010, 2015 Texans in the 2020 Rams. So, so it can be done. They made the playoffs. Being on hard knocks, who knew? Mm. These teams, it wasn't a distraction. Think about that. Even the Bengals made the playoffs in 29 and 2013. Mm. <laughs> so if they could make it, I don't want to hear nothing the Cowboys got to say about hard knocks may or may not inhibit their ability to perform well. Mm. Nah, it's going to be because you are what I think you are, which is not very good. Mm. Okay. I got to know Dave Campo pretty to very well when he was an assistant under Jimmy Johnson mm -hmm. with the Cowboys. Right. And I like Dave Campo a lot, but I never in my wildest imagination dreamed of him as being the head <laughs> coach of the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> he became, to me, the ultimate Jerry Jones puppet. The ultimate. Yes. Yes, man. And he's he's a little guy. He played cornerback at Central Connecticut. And then he, he pay, you want to talk about paying dues, he coached at Bridgeport and Pitt and Washington State and Boise State and Oregon State. In Weber State and Iowa State and Syracuse before he finally landed with Jimmy in Miami and followed Jimmy, obviously, to Dallas. Correct. And somehow he lived to tell and became the head coach. He became the head coach of the Cowboys. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> it's like every time I think of that, I just LOL. Because he was there for three years, three long years. Yes. And they went 5-11 and 11 every year. 5-11, and 5-11, and 5-11. And and so he goes. Are you uh, talking about consistency? Yes, that's, that's consistency. <laughs> he went 15-33. and 33. Nailed it. And Jerry put up with it because Jerry could you know, do the, yep. he's, he's this. He was his little marionette down on the field. Yep. So I take with, with like a billion grains of salt what he's saying here because th this is more of a small-minded view of what can happen. Right. Where, oh, well, he was terribly distracted by right. it because he was on pins and needles. Like, am I saying the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? Is Jerry going to be mad at this or is he going to be mad at that? Was Hard Knocks there last year when they gave up a, a franchise worth 473 points? No. Mm -hmm. Were they there last year when they gave up 6,183 points, which was the second most? Mm. Only the 1960 season, which was the inaugural season of the Cowboys, did they give up more yards? Was mm. Hard Knocks there then? No. So I want to know what was the distraction then? You mean when Mike McCarthy returned a favor to Mike Nolan, oh. hiring him to be the defensive yeah. coordinator? when he was not remotely qualified to be, yeah. and that happened. But that had nothing to do with hard knocks. No, did not. So how, so now, because you didn't make the playoffs last year, you didn't make the playoffs the year before, there was no hard knocks, 
in the past two years, no hard knocks. Mm -mm. You didn't make the playoffs. Now, if you don't make the playoffs, there were, there were the, figurative hard knocks, right? Because uh, yeah, yeah, they took yeah, some yeah, hard yeah, knocks. Yeah. Man. Yes, yes. You took your lumps, mm -hmm. but it had nothing to do with hard knocks being there. Okay. So don't do that, Skip. Okay. So I'm gonna double down on this. I believe that this team is made for hard knocks because I told you that rookie class that they can talk big. Yes. And I think it will it will work great. That, that it will light up hard knocks starting with your guy, Micah Parsons, yes. and, and I got all kinds of rappers and big talkers and potential <laughs> Richard Shermans. I might even have the Richard Sherman before this is all said and done. He just may be a Dallas Cowboy. But here's the thing, though. Are, is hard knocks going to highlight those guys, or are they going to focus on Jerry? I don't know, because Jerry's going to eat up a lot <laughs> of the you. footage. I, I would agree. <laughs> but I also think Dak's return, Zeke's yeah. potential return to greatness, I'll put quotes around mm -hmm. it, uh, CeeDee Lamb's emergence, it's, it's like big personalities. It's like every, every cowboy is like a little mini theater unto yeah. himself, and he's showing his movie yeah. in his little mini theater. Yes. So to me... This is the kind of, of attention that can detonate. It can springboard right. the Cowboys into having a right. very good. I, I believe that, that hard knocks will be a reason this team will go 12 and what would it be? Five. five. 12 you and know five. good well y'all not winning no 12 games. 12 and five. You're not winning 12 mm -hmm. games. You barely won 12 games in two seasons. We will dominate the division. No, and we you will, will not dominate games. anything. We yes. got cases already put on that. Yes, we do. You're finishing third in the division. Mm -hmm. You like third. that? Yep. Uh, how many cases do we have on We that? already got about five, six, seven. I don't care. Well, you will make it ten. <laughs> Whatever you yeah, want to do. I feel skip. real good about it. No, we got we got five that you're not winning the division, and we got another five you're going to finish third in the division. Okay, good. Then I'm good to go. <sighs> I love skip, that breakfast. You do Champions realize like Biden Washington and, and the Giants are better than you, right? No, they're not better. They're better than they're you. They're not better. Overall, top to bottom, they're better than you. I will have the number one quarterback and number yes. one offense in the division. No, you won't. And my defense cannot help but be better under Dan Quinn. I it can't help. Did you it not, has to be did better. Did you not see your offense on Thanksgiving? Yeah. That last time we saw him on national TV. Okay. That was it embarrassing. It was an Andy Dalton special. You like okay. Andy Dalton. I, I remember I you talking about you got it. good. Oh, I remember you came out here. Every Jenny, you remember this like April yesterday? He came mm -hmm. out here. He did go make no five Pro Bowls. Well, he, he did. <laughs> well, you just mentioned the big Bengals made the playoffs in what was yeah. it, 2013? 20, two, uh, 2009 and 2013. Yeah. And oh, who was that? Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton, thank you. But so, in yep. other words, that's my point. It wasn't no distraction. Mm. So it's not a distraction. Yeah, but when the defense is historically bad, even Andy Dalton can't overcome that. Your team, your players were historically bad. Mm. I told you, you signed all those big names. You was geek too. You was happy. We got this guy. He was, he did go to a Pro Bowl. We got that. He did go to a Pro Bowl. He did do this. And just, by midseason, they were all gone. All gone. Wiped out. Get, that was house clean. Many, many years ago. Yeah. They were in the Pro Bowl. I got this. No, you don't. And I can't wait for hard knocks because we will be talking about it every okay. Wednesday for how many? Is it four weeks in a row? Yep. Yeah. But you'll be five, you're going to be upset. They yeah. talk about I can't believe that yeah. that Mike McCarthy did this. I can't believe uh, uh, Dan Quinn did that. Mm. And you're going to be upset. And then Jerry, I can't believe Jerry would say that. Why would you? And he's going to be all upset again. Mm. And you're going to be out. 12 and 5. I'm good. You're good? good? To go. Yep. I kind 12 and of agree. Five. You mm -hmm. might be more upset than happy watching Hard Knocks. Sometimes you don't want to know some of this stuff, but you okay. You don't go with it. I go to 12 see. and 5. We will Six all be watching. No mercy. Well, before winning a gold medal, Team USA needs to show they can win a game first. The Kevin Durant-led American squad suffered their second straight setback yesterday as they lost to Australia 91-83. to Patty Mills led the way for the Aussies with 22 points. And the Americans had their chances late, but a late air ball and turnover ultimately did them in. The only good news is it's only a pre-Olympics exhibition game right now. We still got about two weeks before uh, game start for Team USA at the Olympics. Fox Sports. To NBA analyst Chris Broussard joins us now. Chris, scale of one to ten, and be honest here: how, how concerned should we be? Uh, I'm I'm waffling between a nine and a ten. Whew. All right, and that's not to say that Team USA can't win the gold. You know, they got Kevin Durant, Damian Lillard, Bradley Beal, Jason Tatum. They may just win it on those guys' talent alone. That said, they should be very concerned because we all know they wanted to come out and make a statement against Australia. They had just lost to Nigeria, mm -hmm. a team that a few years ago they beat by 80-something points, 
And they wanted to come out and make a statement. And instead, they lost for the fourth time in their last five international games. That dates back to 2019 when we lost in the world games. We finished seventh in the world games. Now, we didn't have KD and Dame Lillard, but Jason Tatum and several other Kimball Walker and other NBA players were there, and we finished seventh. So this is a concern. I think there's a few issues. One, this roster is poorly constructed. There's not a rim protector or shot blocker on the roster. And you saw that last night when Australia just had its way in the paint. Cuts, dives, backdoor cuts. They were at the rim all night. They scored 44 points in the paint. Remember, it's just a 40-minute game. All right, and then look at the roster. The only player on the team who naturally makes plays for others is Draymond Green. Other Damian Lillard, Bradley Beal, Kevin Durant, Jason Tatum, the other stars are all score-first guys. They can pass, but Draymond's the only one with that real instinct to get others involved and share the basketball. So the roster's poorly constructed. We keep hearing about the continuity and the chemistry, right? Oh, these other teams have been playing together since they were 14, 15 years old. They got a huge advantage. I won't totally... Uh, eliminate that possibility because I think it is a, a factor, but it's a factor that's often overstated. And here's why. Look at Nigeria. Shoot, a lot of their dudes grew up in America. <laughs> Ekpe Udo is from Oklahoma. Uh, Gabe Vincent is from California. Precious Akua is from New York City. Um, it's, a lot of these dudes are from America. They haven't been playing together since they were kids. Australia Okay, to some degree, but they also have seven new players and they've had two or three different coaches in the last three years. What it boils down largely to is this. I think this is an indictment on the way our American players grow up playing from AAU all the way into the NBA. And that is, and I've talked to people around the league about this and former players from, you know, a generation ago. Our players grow up playing two-man or one-man basketball. High pick and roll or drive and kick. That's it. Our best players don't know how to move without the basketball. They don't set screens away from the ball. They don't do backdoor cuts for the most part. And if you look, look at that, though, that tape we showed before I came on and Jen was speaking and you saw the highlights. Every single one of them, it was just dudes standing around the three-point line. Look at this. Is there any movement? No. No movement without the ball whatsoever. And so our default in a tough game is to go one-on-one. -on -one. Yep. Or maybe give me a pick and I'll go one, you know. Whereas Australia, when they come together, it's going to be true for a lot of the European countries, the European countries, when they come together, they grow up playing five-man team basketball. So last night, there wasn't even, we weren't in the same stratosphere as far as execution as Australia. They had guys naturally backdoor cutting, uh, moving without the ball, and they picked us apart. And generally speaking, a, a talented group that plays five-man ball is, is often going to beat a more talented group that plays a lot of one-on-one -on -one or two two-man basketball. Doesn't happen all the time, but often that's the case. So that's the challenge we're going to be facing in this international play. Well, I told Skip the same thing. I gave him an eight. I'm very concerned because I don't believe the team was put together correctly because you look at it, this says we want shooting. Well, you got no rim protecting. You got no rebounding. You, get out, you got out rebounded by 10 or 12 by Nigeria. You got out rebounded last night by seven by Australia. And you're talking about you want to focus on shooting, but you're getting out shot. And see, I think the thing is, Skip uh, and Chris, is that you look at it, you look at these teams, they don't have one player that's better than Kevin Durant. They don't have one player that's a Dame Lillard. And in America, we grow up, if you're the best player, they don't play a whole lot of team ball. We're going to give you the ball, we're going to set picks for you, we're going to get out of your way. Well, that's not how they play. They got to play team basketball. They got to move the ball because they don't have a Kevin Durant. They don't have a Dame Lillard. They don't have a top five player normally. On, now, if Luka, Luka's a different animal. Giannis, if he plays for the Greek, I don't think Giannis is playing with the Greek team, but that's a different animal. 
But for the most part, they have to play this style of ball because they don't have one guy that can just take the game over. And when you look at it, they got no perimeter. Win- they got no perimeter defenders. We've always had, you go back to 92, you had, you had uh, David Robinson, you had Patrick Ewing. You've had Shaq, you've had Elijah Wan, you've had Dwight Howard, you've had Tyson Chandler. You've always had guys that can protect the rim, but you've also had guys that were unselfish and said, you know what, I can score. Yeah, I can score. But everybody can't go get 25 in, a, in, in, a, in an Olympic game. Okay, I'm going to D up. Scotty, Scotty and Mike says, okay, we play D. Kobe says, I'll play D. D Way said, I, I, I lock in. LeBron mm-hmm. says, I ain't giving up nothing cheap. Right now, we got a bunch of guys that j- just want to score. Nobody wants to play defense. They got us scoring the paint, Skip. 44 to 24 last night, Australia. Mm. Australia, I thought they're perimeter guys. Oh, they got Joe Ingles are not trying to get trying to get grimy. Patty Mills not trying to get grimy. None of these guys are like low post players. And they got guys scoring the American team by 20 in the paint. If they had Giannis, if they had Yoke, I said, okay, okay you remember, got that's a lot of backdoor cuts for layups. That, okay. That's my point. Okay. And when you got guys that don't play defense that used to be in like that, Skip, mm-hmm. they look it around and whoop, lay the ball up in the basket. We're going to talk about uh, uh, Coach Pop getting upset. But, Skip, I'm, I'm concerned because these teams are no longer in awe. Skip, ain't nobody trying to get the Michael Jordan jersey. Ain't nobody trying to get no autographs and get picture taken with Charles Barkley and the Dream Team. Mm. They try to kick your butt. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, guess what? And they see you in the game. Man, we beat y'all butt. Y'all remember we beat y'all butt in the Olympics? Mm. Where your gold medal at? Because mm. that's what I'd be doing if I played on a foreign team and we beat the Americans yep. and we got the gold. Mm. Oh, Chris, you couldn't tell them. You couldn't hit me in the butt with a red apple. Mm. Hey, where your medal at? Mm. Let me see it. <laughs> so, my friend Chris Broussard says the sky is falling on Team USA. And my friend across the table says, the sky is no, falling. I said it's raining. Oh, it's raining. It okay. ain't okay. falling. It's raining, though. Okay. It's <laughs> raining. Rain. <laughs> and I say the sky is blue, as oh, in oh. red, white, and still blue. Okay. <sighs> my concern level is at a two, <laughs> TWO2, near wow. the bottom of the scale, because my team, Team USA, still has... Kevin Bleepin Durant. They had He's him the last two games. Best player on the planet. Obviously, he is coming out of what was an accelerated, escalated NBA season, unlike any we have ever seen. And he had to play one on five against the Milwaukee oh, Bucks. Stop. And it went to the bitter end. And if his toe hadn't been one tenth of an inch over the line, he'd still be playing in the finals and probably dominating the finals. Probably not. Okay, but the point is. They haven't geared back up just yet. And it is a new team that got thrown together. And Australia is a tough matchup for them this early in the exhibition run up to the real games. Because, and by the way, Australia doesn't even have Ben Simmons right now. We're going to talk about Ben Simmons in a few minutes here because Shams is reporting that that trade is heating up onto the front burner in Philadelphia and that there is robust interest out there for Ben Simmons. We'll talk about that. But he wasn't even on this team. And it still has six NBA players. And they have played a lot of international basketball together because a lot of them, Delhi and Patty and Aaron Baines and Ingles, Ingles. they came up together. Mm -hmm. And so they, they can just step on the floor and click because they get each other. They feel each other, and they do play a different brand of basketball. And that, from what I saw, that Jock Landale, he, he went to St. Mary's. He's 6'11", and he was the player of the year in the WCC when he was at St. Mary's. Yeah. And then he was just the MVP of their finals at the Australian League. So he can play, and he was dominant. He had seven rebounds last night, which led both teams. So I get you about rim protection, but Kevin Durant can protect the rim when he decides to. Bam can definitely protect the rim when he decides to, when he needs to. When push comes to literal shove in the Olympic Games, I believe they can protect the rim well enough because they can shoot the lights out. They haven't yet, although I thought Kevin and Dame, if you can go 10 or 20 between you, shouldn't that be good enough to win a game? You would think so. Yeah, not when the others go 3 or 16 between them. That's the problem. (laughs) And again, I just don't think they've committed yet because to me, rebounding is mostly about want to. Right. It's just, do do you want it? Do you want the ball worse than they want the ball? And last night, Joe Ingles said after the game, we walked in tonight thinking we would win this game. Well, it meant a lot more well, to I them. Well, I wish you'd have walked into the Clippers game thinking they were going to win that game. Because you lost a bunch of cases. Yeah, you hear how he's talking all big and he's talking all big and bad. Now, Chris, we walked in. 
But also, I think, Chris, before you go, is that if you look at the way they play international ball, they physical. They play like 80s and 90s style. They don't do let you do that flopping. I see the Americans looking around, like, man, that's a foul. And the referee like, you better play on. You better get back on defense because they gone. We ain't calling the foul. Okay. Got it. They'll figure this out. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, don't you think you said it meant more to Australia than us? Last you night. don't think Team USA, after being embarrassed by Nigeria, was like, oh, l- look, let's come back and set the world in order. Yes. Let's show everybody that that was just some fluke, and they couldn't do it. Couldn't. Okay, Chris, what if they weren't really embarrassed by Nigeria? What happened? Well, that's, that's, that's even they, more of a problem. They had Then shame on them. Yes. How could they not be? Did that count toward gold? No. I mean, Byron Scott called it the worst upset in the, in the history of basketball. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that was embarrassing. They should be embarrassed. And it gets- Look, I'm not saying they can't win it. Like I said, they got all the talent. You know, they, they got Kevin Durant. But, Skip, let's not act like just having Kevin Durant means you're going to win. Mm. So are you, you two know, both they insinuating got some too? that if LeGon James were part of this team, this wouldn't be happening? No, nah, if we had Le- uh, uh, LeBron and Kabai, if we had Kabai to lock down on the edge— you know, Kabai locked the thing down on the head. Yeah. But let me tell you how concerned Greg Popovich was. Mm. Who was one of the speakers that he brought in? One Doug Collins, who was on that 72 team that lost to the Soviets, that they refused to accept the medals. So if it didn't mean anything to him, why are you bringing in a guy that, that's lost? Why would you bring him in to speak if you're not concerned about losing? Mm. If you think everything peachy cream. Uh, uh, because I can, bet, I can assure you, uh, Chuck Daly ain't bring no speakers in, mm. did he? Mm. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, that's a, it's interesting you bring that up, Shannon, because I was thinking after they lost to Nigeria, and a lot of people were making the comparison to the Dream Team, right? When they lost to the college kids, oh, it was good for them, yeah. and then they blew them out the rest of the week when they scrimmaged. I thought that's what this was. Yes. But apparently it wasn't. Mm. <laughs> you know? and, and so we just, look, you saw them... We need to play more team-oriented basketball. But you mentioned it, uh, Shannon. I, we got a lot of stars on that team. Who's we, Who wants to do the dirty work? Draymond. Even Jeremy Grant, yeah. that should be his role, do the dirty work. But he was in Detroit last year throwing up 22 a game. So yeah. like, like he's he kind of like, yo, I can do my thing too now. So yeah. I don't know if he still wants to so, do Chris, the dirty work. Bottom, and, bottom yeah. line, are you ready to guarantee that Team USA does not win gold? No, no, Thank you. no. Next question. I can't write them <laughs> off, right. with, but but I'm not willing to guarantee they will. I bet. Are you willing to guarantee that they yes, will? Yes, I'm willing to bet Shannon in five cases. I already bet him, but he no. won't take it. No, I ain't betting. he's afraid. I, I'm not, no, I'm not betting against the Americans. You can't I'm bet against, against Team USA. USA. I understand that. I An respect that. Maybe excuse. you can get Chris to join in on this uh, in the fun. <laughs> no mercy. Well, Giannis has clearly shaken off any rust and doubt following the knee injury he sustained before the NBA Finals. The Bucks star became the second player ever to generate at least 40 points and collect 10 rebounds in back-to-back Finals outings. The only other player to do so was Shaq. And now Giannis and Milwaukee are on the heels of Phoenix heading into Game 4 as they look to tie the series tomorrow night. Chris Broussard still here. Uh, Chris, how sold are you on Giannis as a playoff superstar? I'm sold on him as a superstar, and I'm sold on him as a playoff superstar when he plays to his strengths, all right, which he's been doing lately. He did it in game three. Uh, He did it largely in game two. And by that, I mean playing inside and dominating the, the interior. We know, we talked about it yesterday, all his points off of the free throw line came in the paint in game three. All right, and then what that allowed him to do was get DeAndre Ayton in foul trouble. It got him to the free throw line 17 times. So when Giannis plays to his strength in the paint, he is indeed a playoff superstar. It's when he doesn't do that, when he's bringing the ball up court in the half court set and he's revving up on the perimeter and everybody knows, okay, he's going to drive and he's waiting and he drives. That's when the wall works. Okay, if he's cutting to the basket, rolling to the basket, backdoor cuts, 
um, obviously getting rebounds or if he's in transition and he goes all the way to the hole with the Euro step. The wall can't work against those types of things, but it'll work when he's setting up on the perimeter and revving up to drive. And so that's what happened against Toronto two years ago. That happened largely against Miami last year. So when he plays more in the interior game, he's a superstar. Now, he's not a closer. His lack of a jump shot uh, and his lack of a go-to move hinder him in that regard right now. But Shaq wasn't the closer most of the time. I mean, we, we think of Kobe. We think of Robert Ory. We think of Derek Fisher even. But Shaq wasn't necessarily the guy they always went to down the stretch. So that doesn't mean Giannis can't lead a team and be a superstar in the playoffs. So I, I think he is definitely playing like a playoff superstar. And he's only 26. So I think if he does it this year, he's just going to continue doing it in the future. Chris, for me, I, I, I put him at a 10 because I believe once you become a superstar, that doesn't leave whether you're in the postseason, I mean, the regular season or the postseason. I just look at it. If you underperform, we're going to judge you more harshly. We're going to the critique is going to become more intense. And that's what has happened is because we look at Giannis. And see, we saw what he did, what he was in the regular season. We see what he did in those MVP seasons. And some of, and sometimes those didn't match up. But there have been very few guys that have been able to get 40-point back-to-back games in the NBA Finals games. There have been very few. He's done that. There have been very few guys that can say that they have a resume like Giannis. And there's a reason why we judge superstars. When, when um, we look at Dame and we look at CJ, when CJ doesn't perform, we don't judge him as harsh as we judge Dame because they're not equal. CJ is not a superstar. Dame's the superstar. So Dame gets the criticism. Same thing with LeBron. We judge LeBron harsh because he's a superstar. KD harsh, he's a superstar. James Harden, he's a superstar. And when they don't perform, we judge them more harshly than we would another player. So for me, he is a superstar. Has he come up in some situations? But this notion, when did this ever happen, Chris, that every single game in the playoff, superstars, be it Michael Jordan, be it Charles Barkley, be it whomever, performed every single game. We, we, we got to stop this. We, we've convinced everybody. The last dance has convinced everybody that Michael scored 40 points every single game. Magic had 20 and 20 every single game. Larry Bird had a 25, 10, and 8 every single game. And that's not the case. A superstar doesn't lose his superstardom if he doesn't play well. But we're going to critique him really, really intensely. We're going to judge him more harsh than we would another. So I, I'm on Giannis' back. I've been in Giannis' corner because all I've heard is what he can't do. But he got a pretty impressive resume for a guy, guy that has a lot of cans. He can't shoot the three. He can't shoot the mid-range. He can't shoot free throws. All I know is he's averaging 34 and 14 on 62% shooting, and he has his team in the finals, and he beat the best player on the planet to get there. Timeout. You have ridiculed this still young man way more than I have over the last two years. No, no, no. no. He's not this, and he's not that, and he's not this, and he's not that. And I say, and you know you're what? right. And you know why? Because he's a superstar. I didn't take that stardom away from him, Chris. He's still that. I, and that's why I judge him so harshly, just like I do okay. all the other superstars. When did he get the super? Ahead a star. What, what qualified him for that in the postseason? MVP. What, what MVP. playoff run have you Probably watched that I MVP. missed that he became a superstar? Because I don't know one. I got it all right before my very eyes. Okay. I've watched it all. I've watched seven years of playoff runs that have ended in disaster and calamity for Giannis. So, and I, I, you can't get the super until you show me deep into the playoffs. I just want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. Yeah. So the only way you could become a superstar is that you had to have a long playoff run sure. because you know Michael Jordan only won one playoff game in his first 10 okay. but they labeled him a superstar am I correct Chris Bussard mm. well, he's right. by he far the best player in the game okay then. Yeah. thank you very yeah. much okay so all I know is that I'm I'm not ready to just cave in and say you know what everybody's right all I hear is quit slandering this man's name yeah, you give him to. his respect dude Put some speck on his name. I, I've somehow turned Giannis now into a sympathetic figure. And 
I, I'm not going to give in and give up because all I know is that Phoenix is still up two games to one. Yes. And all I know is that Phoenix has a, a point differential lead of point of plus Minus three. three. They're, plus three. They're, they're, they're plus, plus yeah. three and just points scored in this series so far. Mm -hmm. Okay. Show me more. You got to do it tomorrow night. And that'll make it two to two. And then for sure, I need one big game that you win at Phoenix because you're going to have to win yeah. one big game, right? Let me ask you this though. So if he doesn't win, so if he doesn't win the series, he's not a superstar. No, he's not a superstar to me. I know he won back-to-back -back no MVPs, but I, well, what have I seen? What have I seen? I've seen these two years. I saw 2019 against Kawhi and company in Toronto. I saw them go up 2-0 and lose four straight games, and I don't want to slander this man's name any more than I have to by reading the numbers that declined from his MVP numbers that year. It was a disaster what about for Giannis. Right and what about the bubble trouble? What, what about Miami? He runs into Miami, and they lose. The first three, he didn't want to be then there. he got hurt. He didn't want to be okay, there. Maybe he didn't want to be there. You know, but that, that's that two years in a row. And then I look at all the playoff series they lost by averages of 21 points uh, uh, in the four losses, by 11, by 10. I, I, I haven't seen anything. I, I see a man who has huge holes in his game because we all agree he can't shoot from the mid-range. He can't shoot from three. He had one rare hot night at the free throw line the other night. I don't know what got into him. His home crowd got into him. But in general, he's going to be a subpar free throw shooter by MVP superstar standards. And then I saw finally Milwaukee win a game with two big runs at the end of the second quarter and the end of the third quarter. Giannis did not contribute mightily to either run. The first run, he scored two points in the run to, to close the half. And then in the third quarter, would you believe that Drew Holiday of the 24 to 6 run scored uh, or assisted on 20 uh, two of the 24 points. It wasn't Giannis fueled either time. He scores lots of points. He scored 14 baskets from inside five feet. That had never happened in the last 25 years in the NBA for someone who scored 30 or more points Great. in a game. You see what he did? Where did Shaq score his points at? He made it seem like Shaq was shooting threes, like he was like Dave hey, Lillard. you know what? Shaq versus Giannis, prime to prime. Shaq no. would destroy Giannis. Yes, get, get, I'm sorry. Get. I saw it with my own eyes. I, know, I, I saw, covered all those games. I saw Shaq. And Shaq could close games because they could just dump it to him and nobody could stop him. If you don't mind me asking. But he, they didn't do that, Skip, because they were fouling and sending him to the free throw line. So they didn't have to Shaq. Shaq for the most part. Yeah, I still say he was a little right. better free throw shooter than Giannis has been. Chris, if you don't mind me asking, can I, I want to ask Skip this one question. Why are the Nets not playing? Because Kevin Durant's toe was one tenth over the line. I don't know about no toes. Yeah. I don't know about. I don't even know if he got toes. Yeah. All I know he is that Giannis toes. put him, sent him home. Oh, really? Giannis! If if it's not one tenth over the line, it was one of the great clutch shots in playoff history by Kevin Bleep and Durant. Y Game over. We're having a different conversation. Hello. Chris, you know the argument that he used for the longest time is that KD beat LeBron in his house, therefore he's the best player. Where did Giannis Antetokounmpo beat Kevin Durant? Mm. Therefore he should be judged as the better player. Am I correct? Mm. I'm just using your argument, Skip. That's, That's what you Skip's did to logic. me. <laughs> Kevin was going one on five in that series. You know it and I know it. Skip. Okay, who who do you KD, want right now? Do you, do you want Giannis or KD? I want Giannis. Oh, Giannis I'll take KD playoffs. all day and all night. KD in Vegas. He yeah. can't even beat Australia, Nigeria. Yeah, right. we'll you see. ain't expect him to beat the Suns. Five cases that he beats the gold medal. How about that? I'm okay. not betting against yeah. USA. <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. No guts, no if glory. KD has always had a second superstar. From Westbrook to the guys in Golden State and now what he's got in Brooklyn. If Giannis wins this championship, he will have done something KD has not done. And that's winning without a second superstar. That's huge. Well, Chris Middleton's an all-star. He ain't no superstar. Okay. So what would you say Steph Curry is? all-star. I'll give you that. What about James Harden? I will... I, I'm not going super because what's he ever done in the postseason? Hey, that man is super. Don't, don't do that. It's well, well, seriously. He's a superstar. Kyrie's Let me ask you a question. Would you rather have James Harden or Chris Middleton? 
Would you rather have Kyrie Irving or True Holiday? Oh, that's a close call. Hey, no, close, man. You yeah. better stop it. Well, hey. now I know what Kyrie has done. <laughs> Kyrie's a superstar because he hit the shot of shots to win LeBron. A Chris Middleton is about green. as close to James Harden as yeah. Miami is to Sydney, Australia. Mm. Now, how close is that? Mm. Not very close. So stop it, Skip Bayless. Mm. Now, you know what James Harden is. Okay, but you know and I know that the whole Golden State team got on a private plane with tears in their eyes and flew all the way to the tip of Long Island to recruit Kevin Durant to come save them. They did. That's all I know. Skip. And not only did he come, he lived up to all yes. the pressure, and he was back-to-back -back finals MVP. Game over. Let case closed. Thank you. Had Kevin Durant not gone to Golden State, had stayed in OKC or gone somewhere else, do you believe he could have won a title without being on the Warriors? Well, I know he decided he couldn't win one with Russell Westbrook as his primary and decision And he decided maker. he could not not win one without the Warriors. Mm. That's what he decided. So since he's making decisions, we, you make a decision for him, I think I'll make a decision too. Okay. Well, you can have your decision because I just know he said I can't win with Russell. Yep. Here's a question. You put Giannis... This this would be my good. You put Giannis on those Golden State teams instead of Kevin Durant. What do you think would happen? They'd lose because what? Okay, is, is Giannis a takeover? Does he better. have killer will? Does does he have the takeover he gene? Didn't have to would he be. be the MVP of the finals? I, I, would he say, "Give me the ball and get out of my way"? I'm going to make this three in LeBron's face. Yeah. No, he wouldn't no, do that. No, because he wouldn't be club. Because guess what? Skip. You got to build a wall, and, and Steph and, and, and Clay going to be raining threes. Can't shoot. Right. You can't they shoot. Were worried, they were worried about oh, Steph. It. They were defense, they were building their defense to stop Steph and mm. Clay. And KD is awesome. He was the best player of those three. But it's so much easier when you gotta and I have these other guys you have to worry about. I'm not taking away from what Durant did in those finals. Yes. But let's not act like he was just carrying you know, a bunch of role players to the championship. They needed they somebody to him. put them over the top, and he said, I got this. They had been over the top. Yep. You make it seem like they hadn't been anywhere. They They're had won the, the title before he right. got there. They won 73 games before he got there. And you know who they beat along the way? The guy that you said was the best player that had the killer wheel that was up 3-1? That's who they beat to get there. LeBron had them down two games to one with game four in his house, and he spit the bit. He came up Chris, small. Chris, Chris. Kevin Durant had him down 3-1. Mm. He talking about 2-1. Kevin Durant, the best player on right. the planet, mm -hmm. had the Golden State Warriors. With a liability at point guard. But now he got a liability. With another yeah. superstar. With a second superstar. Who's that? Next to him. Don't do that, Skip. No, seriously. Russ, you know Russ. So don't do that, Skip. He's got how many rings? He's got, oh, zero rings. Oh, so, Skip. Now, you uh, know, all right. Skip. He's a superstar. You, you can be a great player. You can be a superstar without having rings. Don't do it. So, Charles Barkley and Carl Malone weren't superstars. Well, deep run in the playoffs. At least Barkley got to a finals, right? Russ did, too. Is Russell ever going to get to a finals without KD? No. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness is right. <laughs> oh, here? my uh, goodness is the only way to Let's crown Giannis thing. now. Let's just call off the rest Not of the yet. finals. No, He's yet. a superstar. He He's is. the finals He's MVP. Up first. He's yeah. a fine young man. No, we love him. No mercy. Well, tonight during the MLB All-Star Game on Fox, David Ortiz is putting his money on the line on the Fox Bet Super 6 app. It's free to play, so download the app and answer six questions about tonight's game for your chance to win $10,000 of Big Poppy's money. Why not give it a shot? The game's biggest stars collide at 7 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Be sure to check it out. I know all three of us. We will definitely be watching. But despite having plans to fix his shooting woes, and this is new news, guys, the 76ers are open to trading Ben Simmons, according to a report by The Athletic. The All-Star guard had multiple letdowns during Philly's playoff run, which ultimately ended in the Eastern Conference semifinals. Reportedly, the Sixers want an All-Star player in return for Simmons. So, Shannon, should they trade him? Time to say goodbye. If I always believed this was going to be the possibility. I think Doc summed it up after Game 7, and so did Joel and Beal. And I told you, I said, Skip, when, when the head coach said, when that, a reporter asked him, can you win a championship with Ben Simmons as your point guard? And Doc says, I don't know. I don't know if I can answer that right now. Ben and Joel Embiid said he believed the game turned when they had a chance for a layup and we ended up making a free throw. Coming back from that, Skip, mm. the thing, look, we've had, we've elevated the expectations of Ben. 
because he was six foot ten, he could pass the ball. He was supposed to be the second coming of Magic Johnson and, and um, LeBron James. But he's afraid. It's not that he can't shoot. He's afraid to shoot. And I don't know how you win. I believe he's more suited to be a Draymond Green. Now, he's going to have to toughen up to play down there. But he can be Draymond. Draymond don't go out there and try to score 20 points. Draymond does what he does. He rebounds. He defends the rim. Ben is an all-NBA defensive player. Rebounds. Skip, it's hard for me to see a scenario that Ben Simmons, I want somebody to show me where Ben Simmons has gotten better since he's been in the league. It's hard for you not to get better at something. If you do it, if you really do it, marginal, you can get better. Skip, he hadn't got better at shooting the ball. He hadn't got better at shooting threes. He hadn't gotten better at uh, 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 free throws. And you practice every summer. He in the gym. He's getting better. He's putting the time in. How? I'm not saying, Skip, that he's ever going to be LeBron. I'm not saying he's ever going to be able to shoot threes like Stephen Dane. But, Skip, it's hard for you not to do something and not get good at it, no matter what it is. You're going to get marginally better. And I have not seen that progression in Ben Simmons. So, yes, he needs to go find a new home, and they need to find another point guard that will shoot the ball. When they double down on, on, on Embiid, Skip, he can kick it out without hesitation. Because guess what? If he kick it out to Ben, what Ben going to do? Mm. Pass it around the horn. He needs somebody that's unafraid to take that shot. Mm. I believe this is the best decision for both parties. Okay, so one line that Jenny did not mention in the Shams report was that he says that interest in Embiid around the league remains robust. Ah, uh, doesn't surprise me a bit. Yeah. It, it is madness. It is insanity to me that the Sixers are even considering trading him. You can argue he's broke and can't be fixed. I, I don't see that. I think he, this is an eminently fixable Right. mental issue that right. he has with the free throw shooting. All I know is he just made back-to-back all-star teams and back-to-back all-defensive teams after winning Rookie of the Year yeah. his first year yeah. in the league. They trade those players all the time. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, they do. Wow. Interesting. Wow, you're going to give that away? You're going to risk him coming back to haunt you at six foot ten and still 24 years of age? Seriously? Phew. And I hark back to that February game. There was no Embiid. And there was runaway talk that Rudy Gobert was going to be Defensive Player of the Year once again. It was at Utah. Tough place to play. And what did Ben Simmons at 6 feet 10 inches tall do? He said, watch this. And he went for 42 points and 9 rebounds and 12 assists while making, what trade Joel Embiid did? while making 12 of 13 free throws. What trade Joel Embiid? He's highly capable. You going to trade throws. Joel Embiid? When you watch him shoot free throws, is the stroke sound. Yeah, it looks real sound. He, he looks like a pretty conventional. And there's nobody close to him. Yeah. When you watch him shoot a jump shot, when you watch him shoot a three, is it sound? Mm. I don't know because I haven't seen it. Mm. I would want him on my team. I don't know that I would want him at point guard. And to your point about the question to Doc that he stuttered about yeah. for a second where he, he got stuck on right. it. Right. Well, Maybe you need a pure point guard, somebody who's six feet three, who's pass first, right. you know, who brings the ball up yes. and, and can initiate the offense yes. from out the top of the circle. Right. And maybe Ben Simmons has a different role in the offense as opposed to dribbling the ball all the okay. way up the floor. But, hey, against Atlanta, all, all I know is the job that Ben Simmons did on Trey Young was it was special, man. You do, uh, like, uh, like he averaged, I mean, he did such a good job that, uh, 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 Ice Trey averaged 29 mm -hmm. and 10. Yeah. Damn, he should do a job like that on everybody. Yeah, but Ice Trey was cold. He was shivering cold from three because he couldn't get the three yeah. off over 6'10. You do realize that a five seed mm -hmm. sent a one seed packing. Mm -hmm. And in game, and do you remember what happened in game seven? Mm -hmm. Yep, I do. Okay. The demons didn't get in his head until the previous series a little bit, but more in the Atlanta series did it finally just eat him alive. And I will give you this. It's scary how much the demons got a hold of him yes. at, at the level he can play, a two-time all-star yes. level, that he completely shut down to the point that 
he didn't just do the LeBron, I run from the free throw line. He did the, I don't even want to get close to the basketball right. because I'm afraid somebody's going to hack a right. bin and send me to the free throw line. So he didn't even want to touch it. At least LeBron will touch the ball and make the right play to somebody else because he doesn't want to shoot the free throws. Are you all like you do me? Mm-hmm. Are you comparing Ben Simmons to LeBron James? Yeah, when it comes to shooting no, free No, there's no fear, comparison. Fear Stop of it. late Stop game free throws. Skill. That's LeBron blasphemy. LeBron is scared to death of the late game free throw line. Yep. Yep. Well, I'm just uttering the I'm, truth. I'm Thank praying. You. He knows. I'm praying. I've been good. He knows. I've been I am praying. just speaking the no, harsh truth Still. about your man, Lagon. If we create our demons, mm-hmm. only we can chase them away. Yeah. Okay. So what do we do? So what does Ben do about those demons? You go shoot 10,000 free throws this offseason until you get it in your head that I, I got this stroke that nobody can bother. I thought that was what he was doing the previous three seasons. I don't know what he was doing. Because if it's a lie, they told it. Well, because they said, Ben been putting that work in. Okay. You see him on his IG. Know. You see on Twitter, they got clips. He in the gym. He's shooting threes. He coming okay. out on the break. And then come game time, what? Okay. Well, he's got to want this a little more than he's wanted it before. But when you have talent like he has, you, you cannot let go of it this, too, this soon. You can't just jettison this kind of talent. It's, Unless you tell me you get somebody back who's even better than Ben Simmons, but that's going to be hard to do. Skip, even if I don't get somebody that's better than Ben Simmons, I can get somebody that's better for this team than Ben Simmons. He doesn't have to be a better player, mm-hmm. but does, will his role, will he be better for Joel Embiid? Mm-hmm. Would he be better for the team? A Malcolm Brogdon would be better for the Sixers than Ben Simmons. Say I'm wrong. Yeah, I don't know if he's a pure point guard. Yes, he is. He's a two guard. He's 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 a shooter, scorer. Well, you That's can't. Fine. Well, you can't have your. You can't have unless he's LeBron James. You mm-hmm. can't have your power forward running the offense. Well, they just did it, and they they and we ain't got like, a beat. And they had a chance. You know, to they go didn't have no chance. Ways. Yep. You got well, beat. We're gonna be Remember, following this. Joel Embiid had a torn cartilage. Uh, no, so. no, 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 no. We don't, we don't do that. Mm-hmm. We don't make excuses, Kim Bailey. That's and what you told me. Now. Just coming out, so we will be definitely keeping an the eye Pulitzer on. Pulitzer Prize winning Hall of Fame journalist Skip Bailey say, "When you I did not know you know yes. <laughs> No mercy. Well, exhibition game or not, tempers were flaring after Greg Popovich and Team USA lost a second straight game to Australia. The 91-83 loss led to a zesty encounter between Pop and a reporter as the legendary coach answered a question posed to him. So take a listen for yourself. You know, you asked the same sort of question, the same family of question last time, uh, where you assume things that are not true. When you just mentioned, you know, blowing these teams out, that's never happened. So I don't know where you get that. So, can I finish? No. I mean, can I finish? You're saying that's not true. Your average mark. Can I finish my statement? Like Thirty points a game. In those two, in those last two tournaments, I was talking. Can I can I finish my statement? Okay. When you talk, you, you just told me that it's not true, and I'm telling you your average mark. Are you going to let me finish my statement or not? So you'll be quiet now while I talk, and then I'll listen to you. When you make statements about. In the past, just blowing out these other teams. Number one, you give no respect to the other teams. And I talked to you last time about the same thing. We've had very close games against four or five countries in all these tournaments. So the good teams do not get blown out. There are certain games that might happen in one of the tournaments in the World Championship, the Olympics, where somebody gets blown out. But in general, nobody's blowing anybody out for the good teams. So when you make a statement like that, it's like you assume that's what's going on. And that's incorrect. There is a lot there. Shannon, do you have an issue with how he responded? Pop is upset that they lost. Skip, they did. And I understand 92 is not happening. The average margin of victory, Skip, is not going to be 60 and 70 points like it was. Dame literally said these other teams, these other countries just continue to improve. These players, they get better, they get more confident, and they also want to beat us badly. It's definitely noticeable. That's true. Skip, I'm not saying that the U.S. should beat Nigeria by 50. I'm not saying that they should beat uh, the Aussies by 25. That's not what the guy is saying. He's like, they got a sprinkling of NBA guys on your roster, Mm -hmm. on their team. You got all NBA guys on your team, and you're getting beat. It's not the the reporter's fault that you constructed this team poorly. Own it, Pop. Yeah. We are not playing well. We got beat. Stop looking for excuses. Okay. 
This wasn't just about losing that game. This was Greg Popovich being Greg Popovich. Boy, and he has made it harder and harder for me to root to a team I've loved for many years, the San Antonio Spurs. I love me some Tim Duncan and some Manu and some Tony Parker. But Greg Popovich has become harder and harder to love because he's gone farther and farther toward belittling and insulting and bullying members of the media who are asking legit yes. questions, authentic, legit questions, and just trying to do their jobs. And the greatest irony of this whole thing is that l last night, I was ashamed that Greg Popovich was representing my country because he has used his platform many times before to, to criticize scathingly Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Fine with that. Right. But the irony of that is that he has turned into Donald Trump in bullying reporters who just ask legit questions of him. And this was but a he's classic always been case. Asked, yeah. Okay, but he the has been given lies. a pass. True, true. I'll give you the Again yes. and again, I don't know why it became like that somehow that cool, was lovable like, uh, curmudgeon pop, right. you know? How do you let this man get away with this? And then now on more of an international stage, Joe Varden is a fine reporter yes. for The Athletic, mm -hmm. and he was just asking a very legitimate fact-based question saying, hey, in 2016, you played five exhibitions and you won them by an average, he wasn't the coach obviously, right. but Team USA won them by an average of 41 points. Right. So how do you feel now that, that you just lost your first two exhibitions right. Fairly convincingly, right. you lost. Well, that's a legit question. Yeah. And, and it's, it's almost Trump-like where Pop tries to actually change the facts and rework them to his own advantage. Well, we, you don't blow our team. Yes, you did. And, and, and he's saying, that didn't happen. That's not true. Yes, yes it, it did. did. It, 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 it did happened. Happen. <laughs> and then he tried to make the case, which we didn't hear in the, the bite that we heard, but he tried to make the case that you don't insult these teams by blowing them out. Well, they did in 2016, and yes. it worked. You yes. know, it, it, it gave you momentum right. leading into the Olympics. Right. So for me, it, it's, it's just hard to stomach that he gets away with this, and it makes him even more right. lovable because now that he's on the international stage, he's like turning into Bobby Knight. Remember how Bobby yeah. Knight used to be in the Pan Am games yeah. when he yes. got in trouble? It, it's, it's like one thing after another. It's, it's, it, it's kind of mad scientist right. talk. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I'm not saying they should blow these teams out. Yeah. I understand okay. that you have more NBA players on these teams now than what you had, say, in 92 and 96 in 2008. This, this is all, a more international game now. I'm not saying, but if you're okay with the way they're playing, because it's not okay, Pop. I, I'm not sure he's the right man for the, this time and this job. I'm not sure. I've told you before that, what is he now, 72, I think. Mm -hmm. th th there have been times over the last couple of years with the Spurs, right. they haven't made the the, the playoffs. playoffs, and I, I'm thinking, are you losing your fastball a little bit? Are you doing it your way or the highway? Yeah, he to, lost Tim Duncan, Tony Parker. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I knew he and, and he, he once <laughs> vowed, when Tim walks out that door, I'm walking right behind him. Hadn't happened yet. Well, you want to you want to show that he could win without Tim and Tim. No, I, I don't see that, Pop. I don't see you winning another without those guys. Bro, you had four Hall of Famers. Ooh. First ballot. First ballot. And you think you're going to just like... They don't fall off trees. Very good point. Very good point. But Skip, this Thank is, you. I mean, his behavior is unacceptable. Yeah, but, I got it. But you you can't, I mean, everybody sees this. This roster is poorly constructed. I'm not saying they're not bad. Skip, this is not a knock on the players, yeah. but the people that put this together. Okay. The ingredients are fine, but they just don't go well together. We'll see. And the frustration is only going to grow if they continue to not get it done. <laughs> yeah. uh, they need that win tonight, guys. Let me just say that. No mercy. So Lamar Jackson was having a bit of fun recently as he took a break from throwing the ball to play corner and receiver against fans. Well, the video of the Raven star went viral on social media. And it was a bit of a head-scratching move as Jackson is on the verge of a mega extension with Baltimore. So Shannon, how big of a problem do you have with the video? It's a big problem, Skip. I don't mm. get it. Dude's on the verge of getting generational wealth, $200 million. And I know, Skip, you know, you just having fun. Do you know, any, I mean, you're on asphalt, a sudden move, you know, a non-contract injury. We just saw Sarich. We mm -hmm. saw Jamal Murray. We saw guys lose a season. Why, Lamar? I mean, we've seen Lamar do some risky things. We saw him driving excessive speed. We see him playing on the beach. Yep. Lamar, it's not worth it. You are a professional 
athlete. You don't have anything to prove. Bro, just sit back. Get this money, and when it's all said and done, if you want to go out there and have a camp and you want to challenge these young guys, have at it. But, bro, don't mess your money up being dumb. Mm. Come on, Lamar, you better than this, brother. I, I just don't get these guys doing stuff like this. I hear every word you just said, but what I love most about Lamar is what you fear most for him. He grew up being one of those kids where all he ever wanted to do every day of his life growing up in Miami, yes. where you can go outside every day, yes. no matter what, is he just wanted to play sports outside. It could be football, basketball, baseball, whatever the sport was, he just wanted to go play. And so when he sees this and, and they ask him to help out a little bit, because it looked like it was almost a clinic mm -hmm. where, where he was teaching technique. Right. Well, all of a sudden he's playing quarterback and he's playing receiver. Right. It's, it's pretty dangerous with, with kids because they're – they're middle-aged kids where they they can they can run a little bit. They weren't little kids. They were more eighth, yeah. ninth grade kids. You grow up yeah. in the environment that mm -hmm. a lot of us grew up in yep. to get out of that environment. You do. I got it. And not put yourself and not have to put yourself in harm's way. You don't get out I got to it. put yourself back in harm's way by being back doing that. I'm not saying go back, go, not go back and teach. That's not what I'm saying. Yep. So please don't confuse the no, two. No, I, I got it. But but he he won the MVP of this league. That's that's hard to do. Yes. And generational wealth is at his fingertips right now. But deep down in heart of hearts, he's just a baller, man. He just wants to play ball. Skip. Right. I'm gonna get hurt. Skip. We just saw uh, uh, the guy that's suing the Broncos. He tore his Achilles, he and he lost $10 million. Off the field. Off the field. Mm -hmm. If Lamar, if you get hurt, get on hurt on the Ravens' time. Mm -hmm. Shannon Sharp is going to get hurt on the Broncos mm -hmm. or the Ravens' time. I'm not doing anything foolish. I'm not skiing. I'm not doing anything that's going to jeopardize my money. Lamar, it's not. It's, you, you tell me that's worth it? And I know people out there, oh, he's just having fun. It's all fun and games. And then, then you're going to say, if something were to happen, knock on wood, it didn't happen. Oh, he shouldn't have done that. I got it. Well, at least he has some humility about him. He still believes he can go associate with those kids and teach them like he's still one of them. Yeah, skip, skip, go back. Yeah. Hey, man, that's Lamar. Let him see know. that I was in this very neighborhood and I can get out. Yeah. But don't, don't put yourself in harm's way. I got it. No mercy. And, uh, how about this? Tom Brady is hungry for another Super Bowl in Tampa, and it appears his teammate, well, his teammate is too. In a viral workout video, Brady's trusted offensive tackle, Tristan Warps, was seen doing 48-inch box jumps with a weighted vest on. Hard to imagine anyone getting past him this season. Shannon, when have you done this, and how fortunate is Brady to have him? Yeah, I can do that, but I wasn't 320, I wasn't 340 pounds, <laughs> and that's from a seated position. Skip, Tom should be very fortunate to have a guy like this. <laughs> Uh, the only unfortunate part about it, he's only going to have him for a couple more years and then he's retiring and then somebody else is going to get his services. Are you sure about that? Yeah, but he's, he's not going to be there as long as Tristan Worth is going to be there to protect him. I, I know, but Tristan might be a literally huge reason that Tom plays until he's 46 or 47 or who knows how long. But, because that young man, what you just saw, yeah, Belichick did, never provided that for no. Tom Brady. And that, that young man was right tackle this year. He just might segue right over to left tackle and protect Brady's blind side for the next five well, years. Well, you got Donovan, you resigned well, Donovan Smith, so you good. I got it, but I don't know how much longer he'll last. But I think the thing is, Skip, is that I've seen guys that couldn't play do impressive things. This guy, that's very impressive, and he can play. He can that's what you want. Play. He can play. Did you hear his name called all year? Which is a good sign. I think he gave him one sack. I think he gave him one sack. I mean, I didn't even know he was playing, which was a great thing. Right? Yeah, he's going to be a pro bowler for the next decade. I can't get over watching that video. It's yeah. like my knees very hurt impressive. watching it. He was impressive at Iowa, and wow, he has delivered so far. Uh, guys, enjoy watching that All-Star game tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Undisputed back tomorrow, same time. The Herd is on now. Have a good one.